on do I start right now? Who does on Wednesday? Welcome to the 2024 final presentations of the livestock units of the student managed farms powered by New Holland. I'm Victoria Pollard and I'll be the leader of the commercial beef unit in the 2024-25 academic year. Here at Lakeland College, we acknowledge that the land we gather on is a traditional homelands, hunting and ceremonial gathering places of the First Nations, Métis and Inuits, the Plains Cree, Woodland Cree, Salto, Blackfoot Métis, Dean and Nakota Sioux people have practiced their culture and languages on Treaty 6 in Métis Region 2 territories for generations and were the original caretakers of this land. Many First Nations, Métis and Inuits people call this land home today and have done so for millennial. We would like to acknowledge the history we have created today on this land and to be thankful for the opportunity to walk together side by side in friendship, learning from our past, and promoting positive relationships from the past, present, and future. There are few people in the audience that I would like to introduce at this time. Barb Shackle Hardman, Lakeland College Board of Governors, Juan Duke. Ku Kai, Board of Governors, Dean Falsett, Lakeland Board of Governors, Tracy Quinton, Intermediate Dean of Agriculture Sciences, and Darla Spatnanak, Chair of Agriculture Sciences. There are a number of industry representatives who have joined us in the theater and online today. Welcome. We appreciate your support not only today, but throughout the year. Welcome to friends and family who have also joined us online. Hello, I'm Corinne Blazer, and I have the honor of being the 2024-25 Dairy Unit Leader. A few housekeeping details. Washrooms are out the doors to my left, and then right along the hallway, the hallway. Or out the doors to my right, and go right down the hallway. Please turn off your phones or put them on silent so you don't disrupt the presentations. In case of an emergency, there are emergency exits at the top and bottom of the stairs. The muster point is across College Drive in the parking lot north of Alumni Hall. There will be time for questions after each presentation, but in the interest of time, we limit three questions per unit. If you have more questions, please feel free to ask the students during intermission or after the presentations. We are monitoring the YouTube stream. If you are watching, please put your questions in the chat. We would like to start the presentations today with a report from the Roundup Committee. Good afternoon. My name is Cameron Gillen. I'm from Carryville, Saskatchewan, and I am this year's Roundup Committee Chair. We would like to welcome everybody to this year's final Roundup presentation. The Roundup is an annual sale that takes place every year to offer the purebred and commercial cattle, as well as the equines horses. Looking back on our sale, we are extremely happy with the overall success, and once again would like to extend a huge thank you to everyone who come out to support us. This year we felt that the sale ran very smooth as we heard a lot of positive feedback as well as set record averages for our bulls and our horses. Hi, my name is Emily Rump. I'm from Battleford, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's representative from the Extensive Grazing Commercial Beef Unit. Early on this year, we wanted to set some long and short-term goals for the committee and the sale. Some short-term goals being to establish a timeline. We stuck to this timeline well, aside from the catalog being three weeks late. Another short-term goal was to include all three beef SMF units. We accomplished this as all three were a part of the sale, along with equine. Another short-term goal was to review the mailing list. Each unit had a chance to do this, as we were able to add a few people to it, along with remove a couple. For long-term goals, we wanted to maintain sale averages, which this year we exceeded. Another long-term goal 
was to attract new buyers. We accomplished this in attracting five new buyers come sale day, along with including extensive grazing in the sale, offering May calvers. Another long-term goal was to stay within our budget, which this year we came in under budget. Hi, my name is Jenna Moore. I'm from Weyburn, Saskatchewan, and I'm part of this year's equine unit. To increase our sale awareness this year, we decided to print posters and hang them in and around Vermilion. The posters contained a QR code to sign up for a mailing list, and the QR code later changed to our online version of our catalog. Although we had a table set up inside the equine center for Egg Sighting and Little Royal, with our sale videos on display and representatives from each unit to answer any questions. During this time, there was also pens set up, set up outside the red barn with the commercial and purebred cattle on display, as well as the horses were penned inside. Although the Roundup Committee does not have its own social media, we recommend that each unit is actively posting on their social media accounts about the sale. And this year, we made calls to all of our previous buyers to gain feedback and to inform them about the upcoming sale. This year, our livestock inventory sold includes four AQHA geldings, one donation mare, 13 Angus bulls, four Angus heifers, four pens of commercial replacement heifers, and one pen of commercial bred heifers. Hello, my name is Dylan Fuller from Lacombe, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's purebred representatives for the, peer, for the Roundup sale. This year, our team had a very successful sale while achieving all team goals and setting record high sale averages. This year, behind me are the grosses for all of the units. Purebred grossing $92,600, commercial at $44,650, and extensive just over $11,000, and equine grossing $54,250, with a wholesale gross of $202,600, and this excludes Junebug as our 17.5 went into a scholarship fund. Good afternoon, my name is Ashley Tolsma. I am from Leduc, Alberta, and I am one of this year's purebred representatives. This slide compares the proposed budget from 2023 to the actual sale expenses of 2024. It includes advertising, catalog expenses, buyer's gifts, auctioneer costs, snacks, DLMS, videoing, picturing, and printing costs day of the sale. We were able to save on almost everything listed. For the larger expenses, we were able to find a better cost-saving solution for the buyer's gifts, as well as we changed our sale time from 1 p.m. to 3 p.m. in order to eliminate the need for a meal and just provide snacks. We saved a total proposed difference of $8,600, and our total sale cost was $13,085. My name is Carla Rennie, I'm from Hader, Alberta, and I'm this year's commercial team representative. We've updated the proposed budget for next year's committee based on our year. We multiplied all items by 2.5% to account for inflation, and with our two biggest changes being advertising down from $2,100 as it was budgeted to us to $1,000 as we only spent $61. We decided to leave it at $1,000 in case next year's team wants to explore more advertising options than we did, and our second biggest being our sale day meal down to a snack budget, which we recommend next year's team does as well. Hello everyone, my name is Haley Nelson. I'm from Longview, Alberta, and I am one of this year's Roundup coordinators for the equine unit. Our team has come up with some recommendations for next year's Roundup committee, which include exploring a new publishing company for our catalog. As mentioned earlier, our catalog was late coming out and we were disappointed that our catalog was unable to reach some of our buyers before the sale. We also recommend that we keep the sale order format, keep the later sale time and provide snacks, use the same auctioneers and continue to use, con continue to use barnyard creations for our buyers gifts. We would like to send a sincere thank So the question is regarding our advertising budget and how much we cut it and why. I'll pass it to Carla and Rennie. <laughs> we decided to utilize our free advertising options like social media advertising at the Little Royal 
and DLMS and egg sighting. And then we decided to leave it in case next year's team wants to go back to like magazines and radio ads. Does that answer your question? Thank you, Roundup Committee. I'm Victoria Pollard, the leader of the commercial unit for 2024-2025, and I'd like to introduce the commercial beef unit to the stage. Good afternoon, I'm Alicia Coltis and I'm the current general manager of the commercial beef unit. Standing on the screen behind me is my amazing team that consists of 18 students from across Canada. Our team completed a SWOT analysis this year. Some of our strengths include a strong team dynamic, expanding industry knowledge as we were able to meet with other beef producers in the area, and brand recognition as we represent the LCV brand across Western Canada. Some of our weaknesses include team size. We consist of 18 students and this causes us to have many different opinions when decisions are being made. Another weakness is drought. Unfortunately, due to the, to the lack of rainfall and snow this far in the season, the ground is staying dry. Another weakness is economies of scale. Unfortunately, with our limited number of cows, it's harder to split our variable costs over the cap number. Some opportunities we have is working with other SMF teams teams and advisors, different marketing opportunities as we were able to travel to Regina for the Canadian Western Exhibition, along with put replacement heifers into the Roundup sale here at school, and finally the resources and facilities we are fortunate enough to be able to work in daily. Some threats we face this year is the feed and pasture availability, global economic factors such as no meat Mondays starting to happen in elementary schools, and the potential of a disease outbreak that would impact our herd. Hello, my name is Jessica Leonard and I'm this year's secretary. Our mission statement for this year is striving to raise quality beef through educational opportunities and hands-on experiences while creating relationships within industry. Last year's team left us some recommendations for this year. As a team, we completed attending agribition, visiting our herd before we brought the cows home and posting on Facebook every week. We did not complete continuing discussion posts on Facebook and team bonding every two weeks. We did not complete this due to the lack of interest in the discussion posts and due to the busy schedules for team bonding. Hello, my name is Kira Schlout. I'm this year's SOP coordinator. This year as a team, we came up with some long and short-term goals. Our short-term goals being to improve genetics through calling and bull purchase, complete a monthly finance report on year to date, maintain team bonding and get to know each other outside of SMF, and decrease our open rate to the industry standard of 4% or less. We have made progress at achieving these goals by purchasing two new herd bulls for our herd and having our finance coordinator present each month. Our long-term goals are to maintain a medium frame size for our selection criteria, have the whole team do an analysis on all decisions, support and encourage each other with knowledge and experience, and keep inventory and records updated using herd tracks. We have made progress at achieving these goals by using herd tracks to its full ability and having everyone give input when making decisions. We continue to work hard to achieve these goals.
Hello, my name is Megan Lease, and I am this year's Herd Tracks and Records Coordinator. We use gold as a measurement to assess our herd's production throughout the last five years. Our 2023 calf crop growth rate was a 52.5% of the dam's weight. We as a team are very excited about this as we are sitting above industry standard and have improved from previous years. On November 1st of 2023, we preg checked our herd where we are sitting at a 9% open rate. We are aware that we are over industry standard by 5% and our reproduction coordinator will explain this further in our presentation. Our calving season began on January 10th and finished on March 16th, making our length of calving 66 days. We are exceptionally happy with this as we have shown that this has improved our fertility in our herd. Last year's commercial beef team presented a 5.8% death loss. We had to change this to a 7% due to us losing a steer calf out on pasture. This year's calving season has been successful with our death loss being at a 1.1%. We unfortunately had to euthanize a calf due to it being born with deformities. Reason for euthanization was for animal welfare. Please view page six and seven of the booklet for more information. We compared last year's calves to our cows and first calf heifers to see how the herd is performing when comparing weaning weights. The biggest difference found was that our first calf heifers had increased by 117 pounds for our heifer calves compared to last year. As you can see on the graph on the right hand side, we have improved through our replacement heifer selection and our herd as a whole when comparing weaning weights to last year. Hi, my name's Megan Pfeffer and I'm this year's facilities and events coordinator. This year we weaned our calves on September 26, and as a team we were very happy with how the calves looked bringing them back to the college. Our steers average wean weight was 758 pounds and our heifers average wean weight was 682 pounds. This is the highest wean weight the college has seen in the last five years. We think this is because of pasture condition throughout the summer as well as increased selection due to previous teams focusing on production. Please refer to page 7 in the booklet for more information. Hello, my name is Cole Seidel and I'm this year's reproduction coordinator. This semester, we were focused on the calving season and the upcoming breeding season. For the upcoming breeding season, we were required to purchase two Simmental bulls, and when looking for these bulls, we had certain criteria we had to meet. First, we looked at birth weight. We aimed for a birth weight of less than 100 pounds for fewer hard pulls on campus. However, due to the nature of the breed, we had a hard cutoff at 105 pounds. Next, we looked at weaning weight. We wanted an adjusted weaning weight of over 800 pounds in the hopes that this would translate to larger calves come weaning. Finally, we looked at milk. We aimed for breed average of 26. However, combining this with the other two requirements proved difficult, so we had a hard cutoff of 20. We looked at the milk EPD in the hopes that it would also help with weaning weights on calves. Bull 11L matched all our criteria except for milk, where he was slightly below average. 69L only matched birth weight. However, he was close to our other goals, so we felt he was suitable for our herd. We purchased a Red Bull this year, as producing red calves would prove more marketable for future SMF teams. Both bulls were purchased from Tidy Livestock, alumni of Lakeland College, who we were happy to support. Our breeding season began April 8th and is set to end June 10th. We will be utilizing extensive grazings Angus bull for our 16 replacement heifers and using our herd bulls for the rest of the cows. Our replacement heifers were selected for body structure, conformation, and soundness. During the calving season, we found that 71% of our herd had calved during the first interval, 22% during the second, and 7% during the final interval. When we pregnancy tested in the fall, we found we had a high herd open rate at 9%. However, when we broke this down further, our mature cows sat only at 4%. This meant that our replacement heifers sat much higher at 38%. In an attempt to reduce open rate this year, we monitored body condition score throughout the year and maintained a consistent ration. We also ultrasounded our heifers for a reproductive track score. 26 of our 30 ultrasounded heifers scored a three or better, meaning they were reproductively mature at the time of ultrasound. Unfortunately, we had to cull one heifer due to immaturity. We also discovered a heifer was seven months pregnant, likely bred by a Charlet bull that got out on pasture, and we are continuing to monitor this situation. Hello, I'm Taylor Hines. I am this year's inventory coordinator. My job is to keep an updated herd inventory 
The commercial herd consists of 16 replacement heifers that will be bred this year, 96 cows, as well as four herd bulls. Our calf crop this year consists of 42 heifer calves, 52 steer calves, bringing us to a total of 94 calves this year. Hello, my name is Riley Engel, and I'm this year's marketing coordinator. This year, the team completed three break, three break evens to start the year to determine the best time to sell our steer crop. We chose to sell in September, where we sold 45 head of steers to Vermilion Livestock Exchange. There, we averaged three dollars and fifty-nine cents a pound at an average weight of 749 pounds across the scale over there. We were happy with this price as our break-even price was $3.45 at this time. This brought our total steer income to $119,048. Next, moving on to our call sales, we sold two orphan calves this year for an average of $550 per head, 11 call heifers averaging $2,083 per head, four call steers averaging $1,907 per head, Six open heifers averaging $2,939 per head, as well as five call cows averaging $1,833 per head, and two call bulls averaging $2,748 per head. As you can see behind me is the calf market projections over at Vermilion Livestock Exchange over the course of the fall run for 750 weight steers. The blue line represents the market trends over the course of the fall run, and the orange dot on that graph represents the time that we sold that as a team. As you can see, we're very happy with our price that we sold at. And for more information on the break-evens, please reference page 11 and 12 in the booklet. My name is Carla Ernie, and I'm this year's show and roundup coordinator. In November, our team traveled to Regina to the Canadian Western Agribition with a pen of three open replacement heifers. These heifers placed second in their split, giving us $125 in prize money, in addition to their $10,132 from the sale. After our expenses were deducted, we had an income of $8,260. Our team sold 13 open replacement heifers in this year's Roundup sale. They averaged $3,450 a head for a grand total of $44,650. After the Roundup sale expenses commission was deducted, we had an income of $42,801. We would like to thank Anderson Bread Heifers for his purchase of our heifers this year. Our five-year Roundup Heifer average increased once again this year to $3,450. This follows our upward trend over the last five years, and we as a team are very happy about that. Hello, my name is Ella Hebert, and I am this year's Nutrition Coordinator. At the end of December, when our cows finished aftermath grazing, they got put on a ration consisting of pea straw, barley straw, barley silage, corn silage, and 15 supplement. This ration cost us $1.71 per head per day. The cows remained on this ration until they calved. Once the cows calved, we increased the barley silage by 20 pounds per head per day. We did this because the cows have higher nutritional needs at this time. This ration cost us $1.98 per head per day. In March, we decided to add three pounds of barley grain and one and a half pounds of DDGs to their ration. This increased our, this increased our cost to $2.83 per head per day. We did this to increase the plain nutrition before breeding. By increasing the plain nutrition before breeding, this will flush our cows and ensure they are cycling before we put the bull out. When formulating our rations, we focus on the nutritional needs of our cows as well as a low cost ration to maintain a reasonable cost of production. In September, when our heifer calves came home from pasture, they got put on a ration consisting of Cody hay, straw, barley silage, barley grain, and 3620 supplement. This ration was formulated to support the growth of our heifers with a slight gain of 1.5 pounds per day, for they can reach 60% of mature body weight by March. This ration cost us $1.67 per head per day. Hello, my name is Matt Unger, and I am this year's range and forage coordinator. Once again, our cows are going to Lee Park for their grazing season starting on May 18th for 165 days. Our 96 cows and 15 replacement heifers will be grazing at $1.50 per head per day. Our four herd bulls will be grazing at four, pardon me, $3 per head per day. The reason our grazing costs are, are so much larger than last year is because of the 20 cent increase in our grazing in our grazing fee. Also, there's a correction on page eight in your booklet. The number of animals should be 100 and and 11 instead of 107. Hi, my name is Courtney Montgomery. I'm this year's health coordinator. Our replacement heifers received boosters for Bovishield Gold One Shot, Alterac 7, and Ivamec in the fall and sp spring. 
We noticed that they were rubbing and losing hair, so we gave them cleanup this winter. Our mature cows and bred heifers were vaccinated with Scourgall and Ultrabac 7 in December before calving. In March, we vaccinated them with Bovishield Gold FP5. Our calves were also vaccinated in March with Bovishield Gold One Shot, Ultrabac 7, and our steer calves were implanted with Relgro. I'm Lexi Porosny, I'm the treatment coordinator. This year, we as a team decided to change our vaccination pro protocol a little bit. All of the calves were given nasal gen before being paired off to pasture. This was very effective as we only had to additionally treat nine calves. Sick or depressed calves were given ResFlor. This was also very effective as second treatments were not required. In the fall, we had a couple sore cows come through the chute. 48G was treated with meloxicam, and when we weren't seeing results, the vet gave her OxyVet 200, and now she's back with the herd. On the other hand, 34A was not getting better with her lameness treatment, so we made the group decision to ship her. Hello, my name is Carter Bivank, and I am this year's mixed farm coordinator. This year, we spread a total of 4,770 metric tons of solid manure, which 1,570 went out to the new leased half land at seven tons to the acre for a spread cost of $7.28 a ton. The college is now planning on letting the rest of the manure compost to ensure that any foreign weeds and seeds do not go onto the fields. This year through Mixed Farm, I've had the opportunity to lead the field mapping, where before mid-years, I was able to map three land pieces, LCP 23, 24, and the new leased half. After mid-years, due to the cold and snow in the pasture, I was only able to map the bison land, where I got a total of 857 acres on six quarters. The value of field mapping is so that we have an idea of how much land is out there for AUM calculations, as well as manure spreading. Hello, my name is Justin Mess, and I'm this year's risk management coordinator. This year, we started the nasal gem protocol on calves to prevent sickness during the cold snap. We palpated our heifers through ultrasound to get a more accurate repro track score and lower open rate. We kept the herd numbers tight to prevent overgrazing during the potential drought, and we ensured our two newly bought herd bulls. Hi, I'm Tim Moritz. I'm this year's uh, finance coordinator. This year for our biggest incomes, we have our steer sales at $127,000, our Roundup and Agribition at $55,000, and our heifer sales at $31,000. We'd budgeted our steer sales to be around $85,000, putting us $42,000 over our budget. We'd budgeted our aggribition and roundup to be $20,000, putting us $35,000 over budget. And our heifer sales were budgeted to be about $23,500, putting us $11,500 over budget. This year, some of our biggest expenses are our feed and bedding expenses at $61,500, um, our pasture expenses at $23,000 and our labor costs at $16,400. Our pasture or our feed and bedding expenses were budgeted to be about $65,000, putting us $3,600 under budget. Um, our pasture rent was budgeted to be about $25,000, leaving us $2,000 under budget. And our labor costs were supposed to be $6,000. Um, we are $10,000, $10,400 over budget. For this year's budget compared to next year's budget, some of our biggest changes are going to be our steer sales um, going up by $15,000. Our heifer sales this year are at $23,500 and next year's will be at $35,000. And our labor is going up by $11,500. This year's cost of production is $2.44, as where last year's was $1.86. Um, this is because the increase in costs, like our feed costs, the number of animals we sold, our pasture costs, and our vet costs. Hello, I am Elizabeth Jones, this year's research coordinator. We use the Who's Your Daddy trial to see the performance of different sires in a multi-sire operation. We have decided to continue this trial into this year due to previous years purchasing extra DNA tests. We have only tested the heifers this year as this information will be beneficial for next year's team when picking replacement heifers and making decisions regarding the herd bulls. With this information, they will be able to avoid inbreeding while still using our herd genetics. We also have the neonatal trial, which is to determine if one oral supplement of vitamins A, B12, D3, 
DE and selenium is more beneficial than two injections. At birth, blood is drawn from the calf and then they are administered the oral supplement. Three days later, blood is drawn again to see the effects. However, these calves are so deficient in these vitamins and minerals that the liver had absorbed it all by this time. There was an operation that pulled blood every two hours for eight hours after the supplement was given. They seen these same trends. Liver biopsies would have had to have been taken to see the full effects. Good afternoon. I am Tamara Westgard. I am this year's public relations coordinator. Our Facebook page has 1,184 followers and 1,007 likes. We've gained nine new page likes and 27 new followers since the start of September. Our most reached post was the day we announced the 2024 Roundup Sale catalogs were available, which reached 4,135 people. This is the second year for our Instagram page. We have 250 followers. We have gained 49 new followers since the start of September. Our most, reach po our most liked post, which was our Roundup Sale post, which got 73 likes. Please follow both of our pages from the links on the slide. I'm also this year's current event coordinator. My job is to find current events that are happening within the beef industry and bring them to my team. The commercial team has followed many current events throughout the year, but the four most interesting is the Tyson Beef Agreement with Insect Company, the lawsuit against the top four meat plants, night feeding, increasing daytime calving. This is a research on how room and pressure affects calving times as well as the New York lawsuit against JBS over climate change regarding net zero plans. Tyson has made an agreement with Provtix, a insect ingredient company, to expand the use of insect ingredients within the final product for a more efficient and sustainable protein option. This will lower the cost for consumers in the final product, but will have a long-term effect on producers uh, as it has less beef in the final product. As a team, we completed a list of recommendations for next year's team. We hope, to con we hope they continue to use nasal gen on all calves because of the positive effects it had on our, calf on our calf crop this year. We hope for them to go up to the pasture in September when they return to school to visit the herd. We want to see them have more communication with other beef teams as it will be beneficial for the SMF farm. And we want to see them have a, f a physical vote on all group decisions being made so everyone's voice is being heard. We want them to continue two meetings a week as our group found this very beneficial so everyone is on the same page. And we recommend using Teams to send out agendas as we found it was easier to find our agenda through Teams than it was through email. On behalf of the Commercial Beef Unit, I would like to thank everyone on the screen behind me. We could not have been this successful through our school year without our advisor, Bevan Hamilton, the Dean of Agriculture, Tracy Quinton, New Holland Agriculture, Kyle Hafner, along with all other farm staff. At this time, I will now open the floor up for any questions. So the question was, when we did our project projected income for next year's steer sales, how did we come up with such a large number? I will pass this over to our marketing coordinator, Riley. Uh, these calculations based on next year's um, income for calf sales are just based on the increased market projections. So off of CME futures trading, that's where that number comes from. Thank you, Commercial Unit. I am Maddie Jensen, and I have the honor of being the 2024-2025 Unit Leader for Equine. I would now like to welcome the Equine Unit for their presentation.
Hello everyone, my name is Allison Hampton. I'm from Kamloops, BC, and I'm this year's Equine Unit General Manager. Our team consists of 17 students across Canada, including BC, Alberta, Saskatchewan, and the Yukon, all coming from different backgrounds in English and Western disciplines. Our vision is to produce, select, and train quality quarter horses with excellent dispositions and confirmation in an economically sustainable format. Our team has developed a SWOT analysis this year to identify our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats within the unit. Throughout the year, the size of our team has proven to be one of our strengths. All coming from different backgrounds brings forward a variety of skill sets within our unit. Another is minimal conflict within our team. Our team has shown to work well together by understanding each other's strengths while supporting each other's weaknesses. 100% full crop is also included in this. All six of our broodmares caught, carried, and fold out, producing a total of six foals. Good afternoon. My name is Taylor Swedgen. I'm from Elk Point, Alberta, and I'm the secretary of this year's Equine SMF team. Some weaknesses that we have agreed upon is our lack of experience in the horse industry, as we are a team composed of young individuals just starting in the industry of horse training and breeding. High input costs are another, as it is very expensive to breed mares, feed all the horses in our inventory, and to purchase colts in the spring. The last weakness we have decided to include is the number of days off riding that our geldings have. With a combination of weekends, holidays, and school activities, our geldings have almost as many days off as they do being rode. Some opportunities that we have as a team are a strong horse market, as well-broke, well-mannered geldings that have a background working cows and being roped off of are in high demand right now. The Roundup Sale and Ranch horns Horse Competition in the spring is another opportunity as it gives interested buyers a chance to come view our geldings being worked before sale time. Our contribution to the Tiana Friesen Memorial Scholarship and having a horse donated to the scholarship fund is another opportunity as it keeps the legacy of Tiana going. This proved to be an asset as Junebug was our high selling horse. Hello, my name is Willa Harder. I'm from Waltham, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's Mixed Farm Coordinator. The threats we face in the equine industry include, but are not limited to, injury and health risks to both students and horses, potential fluctuations in the horse market. Right now, the market is high, but it does have potential to go lower, which could put a damper on future sales. The third one we face is a changing demographic in the equine industry. As more people are coming into our industry, it seems that they have less experience. Hi, my name is Jenna Moore. I'm from Weyburn, Saskatchewan, and I'm one of this year's Roundup coordinators. Some of the KPIs for the geldings this year are monthly cost per horse road. Our monthly cost is $683.02 compared to industry standard of $1,200. Our, our horse's road per hour is one horse per two hours compared to industry standard of one horse per hour. This is due to our lack of experience compared to industry professionals, and our saleable horses per purchase is at 86% due to losing one gelding Industry standard is 85. Our KPIs for the broodmares are conception rate. Our conception rate is 83%, which is higher than industry standard of 75 to 80%. Our saleable foals per mare bred is 100% compared to industry standard of 75%. This is due to all of our mares having live foals with no complications. And our cost per foal raised is $3,099.93 compared to industry standard of $2,800. This is due to us not having our own stallion and having to haul our mares to stallion owners and pay mare care. I'm Aliyah Kruger from Whitehorse Yukon and I'm this year's Standard Operating Procedures Coordinator. This semester we have five brood mares and as of March 31st we still had one of our geldings. There will be five horses being purchased for the next colt starting team. Good afternoon. My name is Taylor Riddell. I'm from Sturgeon County, Alberta and I'm this year's Training Records Coordinator. On the screen behind me are the following benchmarks for our sale geldings. We were successful in meeting all of our benchmarks this year, except working the flag on our geldings. Our cold starters were fortunate enough to have lots of time on live cattle this year. Our training and marketing goals this year include performing various tasks, such as obstacles, roping, and cow work by sale day, leads, collection, softness, speed control, and pattern work, presenting our horses at a 6.5 body condition score, and our top prices for sales being in the top 15% of the market for similar horses with similar training. We were successful in meeting three out of our four goals this year. Our geldings were closer to a six on the body condition score. However, we had a great sale and we were happy with the outcome. 
some recommendations that we were given from last year's team were to sell our weanlings via soft close Facebook auction, to consider fillies for a colt starting team, and to look at purchasing a proven broodmare if our herd was unsuccessful in the spring. Good afternoon. My name is Annika Eckervote Brewster. I'm from Haines Junction, Yukon Territory, and I'm this year's timesheets coordinator. My job is to create spreadsheets that monitor how evenly individuals are contributing to our SMF team. Our team's progress based off of the recommendations left to us from last year's graduating class is as follows. The income we made off of the weanlings this year has surpassed all other years prior. The five sale horses we have purchased for next year's colt starting team consists of three mares and two geldings. And finally, we called our open broodmare this year, sold her via Facebook auction, and plan on purchasing a proven replacement mare for our herd. Some of the recommendations we are leaving for next year's team consists of continuing with our current feed management and street connections, such as Country Junction and Lyle Lawrence, who we rent pasture land off of for our broodmares in the summer near Clan Donald. We recommend that they continue to watch the first year riding labs prior to the colt starting selection process beginning. And finally, we recommend that they hold team bonding events with the first years continuously throughout the year. Hello everyone, my name is Haley Nelson. I'm from Longview, Alberta, and I am one of this year's Roundup coordinators. This year, our team has come up with some long-term and short-term goals that we have been striving towards. Our first short-term goal was to be riding our SMF geldings consistently by the end of November. We have achieved this goal. We had planned on having a team bonding event with the first years. Early in the second semester, we had a gym night. And lastly, we planned on having our weanlings halter broke quickly and efficiently by November 15th, and we are happy to say that we have achieved this goal. Our long-term goals include roping cattle confidently on our sale geldings before the Roundup sale. We can proudly say that all of our geldings were quiet and conf confident while being roped off of. We had planned on choosing genetics for our broodmare herd by the end of February. Our team has successfully selected the stallions that we will be sending our mares to. And lastly, we hope to expand our views on social media platforms, which includes Facebook and Instagram. We ha would like to have, we wanted to have 500 followers on our Instagram account by the final presentation, presentations, and we are happy to say that we are at 544 followers and have achieved this goal. Hello, my name is Faith Newton. I'm from Willow River, BC, and I'm the finance coordinator this year. Our total income this year was $77,927, with 67% of that coming from the geldings and 27% coming from the weanlings. Our geldings did not meet our projected income this year, as we initially planned on selling seven through the roundup sale and only ended up on selling four through that sale. Our weanlings, however, brought in nearly twice as much as was projected, as we, as we had a high-quality full crop that sold exceptionally well this year. Our total broodmare expenses this year were $17,806, with 33% of that going to feed expenses, 21% to sud fees, and 21% to vet medical costs. Our broodmares were over budget this year on vet medical costs due to having to get x-rays of their own colt, as well as rising vaccine and dewormer costs. We were also over budget on equipment rental and corral cleaning due to the rising fuel and other related costs. As our weanlings sold very well this year, and we also had one brood cull broodmare that we sold, our broodmare unit came out with a net profit of $5,870 this year. Our total gilding expenses this year were $44,725, with 44% of that coming from livestock purchases, 23% from feed expenses, and 9% from vet medical costs. Our gildings were over budget this year on farm supplies due to buying new winter blankets for the gildings, as well as new feed and water buckets for their stalls. We were also over budget on bedding, as the initial load of shavings purchased for their stalls was used up much quicker than anticipated, and we had to buy another load. As their geldings also sold very well this year, they came out with a net profit of $11,324. Our 2024 to 2025 budget predicts a net profit of $6,825, a net loss of $3,546, resulting in an overall net profit of $3,279 for the whole unit. A detailed budget comparison can be found on your booklet on page 18 and 19. Hello, my name is Kira Troutman. I'm from Spruce Grove, Alberta, and I'm this year's AQHA Records Coordinator. The total cost of production for the Geldings was $45,700. We had six horses, making this cost per horse $7,616.76. The total cost of production for the Weanlings was $18,599. 
And we also had six weanlings, making this cost per horse $3,099.93. Hello, my name is Lakin Gibson, and I am from Lake Country, BC. I am this year's public relations coordinator. Our social media accounts have grown a lot since the beginning of the school semester. On Instagram, we have 544 Instagram followers, 1,809 Facebook page likes, 2,317 Facebook followers. We set a short-term goal at the beginning of the year to reach over 500 followers on our Instagram page. We wanted to engage more with our followers by promoting a giveaway. We gained 123 new followers, reaching our goal. Hello, my name is Tita Crawler. I'm from Morley, Alberta, and I'm one of the public relations coordinators this year. We decided to implement last year's recommendation by selling the wheelings outside the Roundup sale and using a soft auction via Facebook instead. Using the strategy has increased our customer range and interest as this allowed our customers to bid after the closing time. We also continued with the Instagram page that was created by last year's team and have increased the number of followers. To keep our audience engaged, we posted individual videos of the geldings and mare doing cattle work, roping, overcoming challenges, and doing general horse training. Hello, my name is Caitlin Erchuk. I'm from Vermilion, Alberta, and I'm this year's Stable Management Coordinator. Some of the projects that we've been working on in the barn this semester have been going through the barn's inventory, creating a schedule for first years doing SMF sale horse stall chores through their class AN 341 and monitoring general barn cleanliness. As the SOP coordinator, my job is to help come up with barn protocols. This semester, I added more signs on the blue doors of the equine center, as well as blanket and feed stalls. We also put together a folder that we have for the SOPs for the next year's equine team. Hello, my name is Lauren Homer. I'm this year's range and forage coordinator, and I'm from Pinoca, Alberta. For our broodmares versus riding horses, our broodmares cost $691 while on Clandonald pasture. This is because we are charged a flat fee rate. Our riding horses cost $1.50 per day, which comes out to a total of $825. And this is be, well, never mind. Um, which means our broodmares cost less due to us not having to supply hay during the time they're out on pasture. Hi, my name is Emily McMillan. I am from Anorite, Saskatchewan, and I am this year's feed management coordinator. In our broodmare ration, they are eating 43 pounds of 23 Cody hay, a free choice Hoffman's mineral, and a free choice cobalt salt block. This ration comes with a total of $5.51 per head per day. We started feeding our geldings on January 8th, and the ration we fed them was recommended to us by Country Junction, and it consisted of 37 pounds of 23 Cody hay, 3 pounds of Hoffman's Elite, the pro fat differed a little bit per horse, but it was all around 1.5 to 2 pounds per animal, 2 pounds of oats, a free choice Hoffman's mineral, and a free choice cobalt salt block. This ration comes to a total of $8.82 per head per day. As we were working our geldings five days a week for two hours every day, we fed the elite as it is a balance for peak performance and it is good for a cooler energy for our animals. And we fed the pro fat because it is a high fat supplemental feed enhancing their ration, and it gives our horses more body condition and a cooler energy. This year we had six weanings to register and five geldings to transfer. We also did four DNA kits for our broodmares as requested from AQHA, and one DNA kit for one of our weanlings as it had a large roll patch on its side. Good afternoon, my name is Charlie Turand. I am from St. Albert, Alberta, and I am this year's breeding coordinator. All five of our mares are healthy and in full, but unfortunately, one of our mares came up open, so we are currently looking for a replacement brood mare. Our 2024 stallions consist of Obsessed with Corona, Ivory League, Would Be Stunning, Circle Bar Grey Gun, and Northern Diamond Cat. Since Chantel came up open this breeding season, the breeders of Circle Bar Grey Gun offered us a rebreed fee of $150. Monica and Tebow's mare care is $0 as it is included in the overall cost. Average vet cost between each mare is $143.60. The mixed farm team this year is working on the Alberta Environmental Farm Plan. The Alberta Environmental Farm Plan is a whole farm self-assessment tool used to spot any potential risks for the environment of the farm. Uh, it was last done in 2016 and will be needed to be updated and approved by 2026 so that dairy can sell their milk. If the school were to have hogs, then we'd also need it to sell those. We were able to do a workshop with our EFP technician, and that way we could gain a better understanding of what the Alberta Environmental Farm Plan is, along with how to fill it out. 
Good afternoon. My name is Mackenzie Hannes. I am from Williams Lake, BC, and I am this year's health coordinator. Health records for Roundup horses consist of two shoeing sessions before the sale. On March 22nd, our sale horses went to Delaney's vet clinic, and four out of five of them passed their health and lameness exams. However, Jerry did slip, slip at the vet clinic, but this did not affect his performance at the sale. The horses were also treated for lice in the beginning of March. Health records for broodmares consist of administering second and third doses of Pneumobort K. They've all had their feet done recently and they were all dewormed on April 4th. We'll be vaccinating for strangles and the flu after they deliver their foals. This year we sold four AQHA geldings in the Roundup sale and we're very happy with the outcome. We set a new record sale average of $13,562.50. Some of our biggest costs associated with the Roundup sale are DLMS and the catalog. And this year our per lot commission was $422.06 bring our total commission to $2,110.30. We would like to extend a big thank you to all of our 2024 Roundup buyers. Susanna LeMay, Kevin Hillman, Gord Ziegler, Chelsea Hunter, and Ken Lesko. Junebug was previously owned by Tiana Friesian, a Lakeland alumni that graduated from the equine program. Tiana's parents donated Junebug to the Tiana Friesian Memorial Foundation. Our team took in Junebug and rode her five days a week to be prepared for the roundup sale. Junebug was our highest seller, bringing in $17,500 into this foundation. For more information on Tiana's story and ways to donate, donate please visit our social media pages. We would now like to express our gratitude to those who have purchased horses from us through our Facebook auction. Thank you. Additionally, we would like to thank New Holland Agriculture, Tracy Quinton, Denise Martin, our SMF advisors, the farm team, and our faculty advisors for their continued support throughout the year. I would now like to open the floor to any questions. Uh, yep, the question was a uh, couple questions about our finance. Um, I'm going to call on Faith, our finance coordinator. Okay, so the, those costs are because they, we did not pay, actually pay for them until after our year end date. They, don't be, they are not included in the, like, the income statement and our like, expense charts because they, they are part of the cost of production for the horses, so they are included in that. Does that answer your question? Are there any other questions at this time? The question was what our vision was with breeding our mares to those specific stallions. I'm going to call on uh, Emily to answer this question, our feed coordinator. So our vision for the stallions is we want a horse with like correct confirmation, and we are looking at both barrel lines and cow blood lines, both. Um, we're just looking for something that really matches our horses. Does that answer your question? Their questions at this time? Yes. Um, for your broodmares and expense debt, would the cost, your vet cost and your track fees are like your fees possibly expensive? Yes. Is that similar to industry standard or how does it compare? Um, the question was how does our feed costs uh, compare in our broodmare budget? I'm going to call on Faith, our finance coordinator, to answer this question. I'm unsure of how these costs compared to our industry standard. I will get back to you that on that shortly.
Thank you to the equine unit. My name is Shanalee Fankanel, and I will be the leader for the purebred team next year. I would like to introduce the purebred beef unit to the stage. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Brooklyn Headley. I'm from Rapid City, Manitoba, and I'm the general manager of this year's Purebred Beef Unit. This is our final presentation. This year, our team consists of 17 members ranging from Alberta to Prince Edward Island. Our herd vision is to create functional, high-quality cattle to suit the needs of both purebred and commercial breeders while advancing student learning and management. Last year's team left us five recommendations to communicate directly and effectively with one another. We feel we partially accomplished this recommendation as our communication was sufficient in person but lacked in our group chat on Teams. To continue utilizing the AI program, to create a strong team bond early in the year, to have grooming and showmanship demonstrations to share knowledge across the team, and to create cost-effective rations. We feel we accomplished all of the remaining recommendations. Good afternoon. I'm Carlin Rajat from People's Saskatchewan. Our team created a SWOT analysis to lay out our strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. Some of our strengths include wide variety of experience and diverse knowledge among our team members, as well as a large team size, farm team, and staff advisors to provide guidance through mentorship. Some of our weakness, weaknesses include a small herd size, high turnover rate regarding the management of our herd, and our show and sale animals will go on feed later than other producers. Some of the opportunities that we are presented with are semen and embryo donations from other producers, as well as building relationships within the industry and having higher market prices than previous years. Some of the threats that we face are competition within the Angus breed, unpredictable weather, and public perception. Our short-term goals are to create strong team dynamics, conduct efficient meetings, create opportunities for hands-on learning experiences for our team members, and to gain a more thorough understanding of our herd. We believe we accomplished all of these short-term goals. Our long-term goals are to build a productive and high-performance herd, create uniformity within our team, and to build a Lakeland College brand and create new industry contacts. Since September, our team has been making herd decisions with these goals in mind. Our team set out some recommendations for next year's purebred unit. To purchase new bred heifers and new stock early in the year, have team bonding events once a month, to start discussion in advance, to increase the number of purebred lots in the Roundup sale, and to create subcommittees to suggest major decisions to the team. Good afternoon, my name is Chloe Lone. I'm from Montague, Prince Edward Island, and I'm this year's team bonding organizer. This year, we set a goal to host as many team bonding events as possible throughout the year. We believe we partially achieved this goal as we did hold a few planned larger events but also had the opportunity to participate in some small events, such as a dinner after our roundup sale, preparing cattle for the sale, and many more. We, due to our busy scheduling and prior commitments, it does cause difficulty trying to hold planned large events regularly. We believe hosting these events allowed us to communicate effectively and work more uniformly together as a team. Good afternoon. My name is Lexi Dietrich, and I was this year's public relations coordinator. Our most engaged post on Instagram was our post containing our Heartland Cattlemen Classic Show, outlining some of our highlighted cattle, sale cattle that we had up for offer, as well as inviting everybody out to the stall to come for a visit. This post reached 217 accounts. Our most engaged post on Facebook was our post about our Roundup sale ad that I made, and this post reached 3,300 accounts. I also continued the Adopt-A-Calf this year, as per the past public relations coordinator recommended. This included going to the Two Hills kindergarten class with a commercial representative. They picked one purebred calf, picked 6M, naming her Coco, 
and as well as one commercial calf naming her 169M naming her Marshmallow. These kids have since been getting updates on how their calves have been growing. So far, there has been 46 posts, including the Roundup sale, the shows that we attended, Adopt a Calf, and as well as our team bonding. Good afternoon, my name is Hannah Ring. I'm from Brooks, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's finance coordinators. This year, the majority of our income came from our Roundup sale animals, with coal sales taking up the rest of our income. We were quite pleased with the results of the sale, <clears throat> with bull lots doing better than anticipated. However, our replacement heifers came up a little bit short. This can be explained by last year's team giving us a larger bu budget due to thinking there would be more lots. Good afternoon, my name is Shane Schwangler. I'm from Alder Flats, Alberta, and I'm also one of this year's finance coordinators. Our major expenses this year included feed, breeding, and labor, and our other costs consist of custom trucking, farm supplies, utilities, deductions, equipment, rental, and advertising. A further breakdown will be provided on the next slide. Our insurance expenses weren't factored into last year's budget as a new bull was purchased. However, injury to that bull led us to purchase a replacement and insurance accordingly, and as a result, our livestock expenses exceeded the budgeted amount. For labor and equipment rentals, we decided to match them to better meet industry standards and our corral cleaning increased as farm team decided to have extra stockpile manure hauled out. We believe that next year's team will accumulate more income due to hopefully adding more lots to the Roundup sale. However, we are also projecting that next year's team will acquire more expenses. This is due to increasing labor to align with industry standard and raising grazing expenses. Uh, we are projecting that next year's team will profit $3,000 more than we were budgeted. The reason for our income being so high this year is due to high culling and coal prices, as well as a successful roundup sale. This year's cost of production came to $2.52 per pound per wean calf. We factored in pasture and feed costs for a single cow, calves that got marketed, our livestock sales, and other cow herd costs, such as yardage, breeding, and health expenses. For a further breakdown of the purebred finances, please refer to page 26 of the booklet. Good afternoon, my name is Ashley Tolsma. I am from Leduc, Alberta, and I am one of this year's Roundup and Marketing Coordinators. To calculate the cost of the break-even, we took into account cost to purchase calves in September, the cost of feed, an industry standard death loss, yardage costs, which include labor, and miscellaneous costs, which consists of vet bills and sale deductions. This break-even is calculated for a six-month time period ranging from September to March 23rd, the date of the Roundup sale. We are excited to say we have easily surpassed the break-even prices on the board behind me regarding the success of the sale. Hello, my name is Dylan Fuller and I'm from Lacombe, Alberta and I'm one of, also one of this year's Roundup coordinators. This year our team had a very successful sale with our high selling bull OAV22L selling for $8,750 to Shady Lawn Stock Farms of Elk Point, Alberta and our high-selling female OAV11L selling to, for 4250 to Red Ridge Farms of Forsberg, Alberta. And this year we had a high selling, uh, setting a high-selling average for our bulls just over $5,900 and our heifer average at $3,962. At this time, I would like to send out a sincere thank you to all of our 2024 Roundup buyers for all their continued support and their interest in our livestock. Hi, my name is Cameron Gillen. I'm from Carryville, Saskatchewan, and I'm also one of this year's marketing roundup coordinators. This year, our call sales included 10 heifer calves, 9 call cows, 4 bull calves, 4 yearling heifers, 2 steer calves, 1 mature bull, and 1 free martin heifer calf, bringing our call sales to a total of $71,303.05. This year, our call sales came in over budget, which was due to us calling extremely hard on foot and leg structure, reproductive ability, and temperament. We did this to improve the overall quality of our herd for future teams. My name is Isabella Acorn. I'm from Dundas, Prince Edward Island, and I'm one of this year's show team coordinators. On January 12th to the 13th, our team had the opportunity to exhibit three of our animals at the Lloyd X Cattleman's Call. 32L placed first in class, and 22L placed second in the bull class, allowing them both to be in the final round. 
Our one heifer, 11L, placed third in a tough class of open heifers. Later that same month, our team traveled to Stetler, Alberta, where we had the opportunity to take part at the, at the Heartlands Cattlemen's Classic, where we exhibited the same show string as we did in Lloyd, 32L, 22L, and 11L. Only the top two animals were being pulled out in each class, and unfortunately, we were not in the top two. These shows were a great opportunity for us to advertise our sale animals, as well as gain contacts for our Roundup mailing list. I'm also one of this year's show team coordinators. Please refer to the provided slide behind me, as some of the expenses in the booklet are incorrect. On this provided slide are the total show expenses for the 2023-2024 purebred unit show team year. This year, we decided to attend four cattle shows. The budget that was set for us based on last year's team recommendations was $5,885. In total, we only spent $5,676.73, leaving us with a total variance cost of $220.23. We believe attending these shows allowed us to market our cattle and gain more industry connections. Hello again, I am also one of this year's genetics and reproduction coordinators. We were very pleased with the performance of our 2023 calves. Our bull calves exceeded the five-year average weaning weight and heifers meeting it. The reason for our calves being over the industry standard 43% of, of the dam's weight is due to creep feeding our calves prior to weaning in the fall. After consulting with industry professionals, we believe that our high open rate may be due to inconsistent heat, heat detection or semen quality issues. To address this, we have been extra diligent with our heat detection and are hoping for a lower open rate come fall. Last year's team did a five-day sync program on all of their AI females. However, two cow groups did poorly. This year, we are only syncing our heifers with two doses of estrumate as they seem to do better on a heat cycle. Our length of calving season was 59 days, wrapping up at the end of February. This is shorter than the industry average of 63 days. Our death loss will be reported following weaning in September with an industry average of 4%. Good afternoon, my name is Alicia Peterson. I'm from Settler, Alberta, and I'm one of this year's records and Angus administrators. Please refer to the slide behind me rather than the booklet as some corrections have been made. Currently, our herd inventory includes 38 cow-calf pairs, four embryo pairs, six replacement heifers, and one herd bull, giving us a total herd value of $217,700. At the end of this calving season, we completed the registration of all the 2024 calves with the exception of the embryos. The embryo transfer calves will be registered in the fall of 2024 after DNA testing has been completed. Good afternoon, my name is Lara Coleman and I am one of also this year's records and Angus administrators. I am from Fort McMurray, Alberta. This year, we used the Hertrax program to input all calving records into the system. This is to ensure that each calf gets its own unique profile made and that future teams will be able to track their events and history from time going. I'm Kelsey Weber, I'm from Goodsell, Saskatchewan and I'm the other genetics coordinator. The team is pleased to present 41 new calves for the 2024 year. This includes 23 AI calves, 4 embryo calves, and 14 natural service calves. The team has 53 females to breed this year. This includes 24 AI calves, 18 embryo recipient calves, 6 AI replacement heifers, and 10 natural service calves. Within the team, we made an AI committee to decide which cows will be AI'd and which ones will be natural serviced. We did this by comparing the EPDs and the phenotypes of the cows to a sire that will better their progeny. For more information, refer to the booklet for a list of AI sires and embryos. The team was tasked with finding a new bull after last year's bull purchase came up with reproductive issues following the 2023 breeding season. We made a bull committee to decide we made a bull committee to find the right bull, and with that said, we purchased a bull from Greenwood Cattle. We are excited about his muscling and his genetic potential he has to offer. It cost us 
$161 per head for our six replacement heifers, $154 per head for our AI cows, $118 per head for our natural service, and $738 per embryo implantation. As one of this year's reproductive as one of this year's health and treatment coordinators, we conducted semen testing on all the sale bulls on February 29th. We incurred stress-related issues with three bulls. However, upon reevaluation on March 18th, all the bulls passed their test successfully. This year's team opted out for an ultrasound method instead of palpation this year. Each heifer underwent scoring and evaluation of the maturity of the reproductive system. This facilitated a call method to ensure that heifers were sufficiently mature prior to breeding. As a result, we called 8L to dis due to severe metritis. We estimated our heifers on October 18th, March 5th, and March 20th, as our sale bulls ended up getting into our heifer pens. This year's treatments included three scours and two others, which were composed of animals who didn't have a definite who didn't fit into a specific category with their diagnosis. This would include 94E, who uh, was treated for suspected hardware disease and unfortunately passed away due to suspected liver absences. Similarly, 13L was pre presented as a hardware case and was treated accordingly, and we were able to sell them in the market once withdrawal periods were completed. Our two sick, sick cases were animals who didn't who seemed unwell but didn't have a definite diagnosis, and these animals were treated with Resflor or Oxybet to promote recovery. Hello, my name is Jaden Corcoran. I'm from Ardross in Alberta, and I'm one of this year's herd health coordinators. This year, the team decided to take some preventative measures to obtain a positive herd health. Uh, early in the semester, we noticed the sail bulls are rubbing out their hair, and we decided to treat them as well as with the heifers with cleanup just to deal with the lice issue. Prior to calving, all the cows received scour guard to ensure none of their calves had diarrhea when they were newborn calves. They received Ultrabac 7 as well for any clostridial diseases, and they received Ivamec and Poron as well for lice and parasite control. At the end of March, calves received Ultrabac 7 again as prevention for clostridial diseases. As well, they received Bovashield Gold One Shot, and this is the deal with any respiratory diseases. Within 72 hours of birth, we also gave all the calves Vita First, and this is your A, D, E, and Selenium, and this is just done to give them a head start. They also re received Bovalis Nasal Gen 3 PMH, and this is given to them and hopefully to avoid the chances of pneumonia. Prior to breeding, the cows also received Boba Shield Gold FPF5, and they got this to avoid any chances of an abortion. If you're interested in what these cost on a per dose basis, please refer to page 31 of the booklet. Thank you. Hello, my name is Casey Thompson. I'm from Kinder, of Saskatchewan, and I'm one of this year's nutrition coordinators. This year, we set a goal weight of 1,300 pounds for our sale bulls, and we achieved this goal by having an average weight of 1,330 pounds on sale day. This year we made a few changes to our ration as we added wheat, dry distiller grains into their ration to increase the protein level up to 15%. Our bulls were gaining 3.22 pounds per day on this ration and was costing us $3.31 per head per day. This year our replacement heifer ration stayed similar all year. We made one change by adding straw into the ration as filler as we were getting the gains that we needed. We predicted to need an average daily gain of 1.5 pounds per day to hit our target weight and we had an actual average daily gain of 2.2 pounds per day and this ration was costing us $1.67 per head per day. Hi, my name is Maddie Webster and I'm from Kawartha Lakes, Ontario. I'm this year's other nutrition coordinator. Behind me on the screen here is our dry cow and our lactating cow ration. As you can see, they're almost the same, although we added some barley silage to the lactating cow ration. and three pounds of barley grain. Doing this, it allowed our cows to reach the 11% protein and reach their nutrition plane. I'm this year's range and forage coordinator. The grazing plan for this year is 32 pairs will go on to LC21 or the L rotational graze. There's the possibility of using the razor grazer to utilize the pasture more efficiently. Nine pairs and six bred heifers will go to Lee Park. The 2023 grazing cost was $10,854 we've budgeted $12,524 for the 2024 grazing season. The increase in the grazing budget is due to an 
higher grazing costs per head. Hi, my name is Helena Anderson. I'm from Pigeon Lake, Alberta, and I'm this year's mixed farm coordinator. One of the projects the mixed farm team is working on this year is creating a blend for LC45 that can be grazed or used as a stockpiled forage if needed. LC45 is an 86 acre field that will be seeding at a rate of 12.2 pounds per acre. We will be using 1,220 pounds of seed and the total cost will be $7,637.50. The above chart shows the different varieties in the blend, the percentage of each variety, the pounds needed and the price per pound. The blend will be seeded this spring and we hope to utilize this forage in the 2025 grazing season. Please refer to page 33 in the booklet for more details on the blend. We would also like to take this time to thank Schaff Angus Valley, Lazy MC Cattle, DNN Livestock, Red Rich Farms, and Borson Marketing Services for their ongoing support to our breeding program. We would also like to thank New Holland Agriculture, Austin Partington, Chris Lehman, Kyle Hafner, the rest of Farm Team, and the other staff advisors. I would now like to open the floor for any questions. So the question was asking if there's a sp specific ratio between heifer calves and bull calves that we are expecting in our calf crop. I'll pass this on to one of our genetics coordinators, Kelsey Weber. Um, we kind of expect, since we only have 41 females to breed this year, we kind of expect like a 50-50 or 60-40. Um, I don't have the results right now for you, but I can get them for you later. Um, I don't think we would consider that due to the fact that we're trying to breed for both female and male and it depends more on the sire and the breeding background. Um, I could ask my team and look into that later. We do rely on a lot of donations and there's not very many producers out there who are willing to donate sex semen. Does that answer your question? So the question was just regarding how did we decide which animals to AI and which ones to breed naturally. I will pass this on to one of our genetics and repro coordinators, Kelsey Weber. Um, we put together an AI committee and we based it on EPD decisions and the phenotype and the 10 cows that we picked to go with the bull, the bull would better their progeny than any of the AI sires we picked. Does this answer your question? Yes. Uh, what percentage are you talking about? That's off. I'm not answering. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Peer Red Unit. Uh, right now, we're going to have a 15 minute intermission. There will be cookies and beverages in the cafeteria. Please make your way to the cafeteria, which is to your left down the hall outside.
Welcome back, everyone. My name is Karsten Grabber. I am the SMF leader for extensive grazing and bison club, not bison club, bison for next year. Uh, can you please welcome me, help me welcome bison SMF. Good afternoon. My name is Kiefer Giddish. I'm from North Battleford, Saskatchewan, and I am this year's Bison Unit General Manager. Our team this year consists of five students with varying backgrounds in agriculture. Our vision is to establish a foundation for a productive and profitable bison herd. We aim to achieve this through education, improved pasture management, and contribution to the bison industry. Our team has created some short-term and long-term goals for this year. For short-term goals, we wish to manage our net profit loss by making production decisions that make sense economically, as well as continue to develop strong connections within industry by reaching out to industry experts and producers for recommendations and advice. For long-term goals, we wish to improve our pasture productivity by managing our grazing and continue to establish a strong foundation for future SMF teams as our unit is in its establishing years. <laughs> First, while an analysis, some strengths that we have identified is an optimal herd size as we managed our herd size to better utilize our available resources, land availability as we currently have seven quarters fence for bison available to us, established facilities as we have a fully functioning handling facility connected to our pasture to use for processing, and working relationships as we continue to develop relationships with industry. For weaknesses, we have multiple roles as this leads to busy schedules and added stress during busy times. Our watering system, as we have had many challenges with it this year and is our main limiting factor for our grazing rotations. Pasture production, as we have had limited forage this year due to overgrazing and the drought. And our interior cross fences, as some of our cross fencing is currently falling apart. For opportunities, we have industry support as we are very fortunate to have many producers and industry members who support us and provide us with opportunities to further our learning Increase in demand as the bison market in Canada is growing with an increase in production, slaughter, and live export numbers. Direct marketing as we were able to market our cows directly to our buyers. And educate the public by bringing awareness to the bison industry through SMF activities. For threats, we have the drought which has impacted our forage production, feed cost, and feed availability. Late snowfall, as the late and limited snowfall impacted our winter water as well as our pastures. Niche market, as it is a smaller market with frequent fluctuations and limited available resources due to the size of our industry. Hello, my name is Paige Ginrich. I'm from St. Albert, Alberta, and I'm this year's Records and Reporting Coordinator and Secretary. For our key performance indicators this year, we chose to adapt gold from the beef industry to fit bison industry standards. This stands for growth rate, open rate, length of calving season, and death loss. For growth rate, industry standard is to have 450 pound bull calves and 400 pound heifer calves at eight months of age. Our calves sold at roughly six months old and came in at an average of 390 pounds for bull calves and 350 pounds for heifer calves. For open rate, the industry standard is 10%. We came in at 10.5%, with 20 out of 190 cows that were bred coming back open at preg testing in January. This is down from last year's rate of 13%. For length of calving season, the goal is to go from May to June, having 90% of calves in May and ending in early June. Last year's calving season went from April 15th to June 23rd, and this year we had our first calf on April 8th. Bison are seasonal breeders, so the goal is for a set time frame in spring rather than a set number of days. Death loss industry standard is to be the less than 4%. We had less than 1% this year. We lost three calves, one was stillborn, one due to predation after losing its mother, and another during processing. 
We also lost two cows. One died struggling to get out of a mud pit and the other due to natural causes after self-isolating and being in poor condition for several weeks. Earlier this year, we reduced our herd numbers. We went from 190 cows to 119. Out of these cows that were retained, 24 will be first time calvers this spring. We returned three bulls that were donated to us on lease from Dean Andres at Pilatus Ranch for the 2023 breeding season. We currently have nine bulls, 10 replacement heifers from last year's calf crop, and one heifer calf. The recommendations from last year's team was to attend the Canadian Bison Association and Bison Producers of Alberta conferences. We only had the room and our budget to attend one, so we chose to attend the Bison Producers of Alberta conference. Purchase new breeding bulls, but due to our herd management, we no longer required to replace our donated breeding bulls that were on lease. Continue to network, which we have done by reaching out to industry and attending events, and keep some heifer calves back as replacements, and we have chosen 10 heifer calves to keep back for future breeding stock. I'm Alexa Swoke. I'm from Manville, Alberta, and I'm this year's nutrition coordinator. Our current ration is a two-to-one ratio of grass mix hay and barley or pea straw. Our bison are receiving 1.8% of their body weight in dry matter per day with this current ration. We are bale shredding this ration daily mixed in order to prevent feed wastage from the bison sorting through our feed. Our previous ration was significantly higher prior to our herd, herd management decisions. Our current, we are currently feeding northern bison mineral, which we have started feeding since fall. It contains higher trace minerals, vitamins, zinc, and manganese. It also contains selenium added at 60 milligrams per kilogram, as well as added copper, which is a common deficiency in herds in the area. We feed this free choice alongside loose blue cobalt salt, which regulates intakes levels and increases the palatability of the mineral. We've seen very good results switching to this blend and have fixed our prior issue with consumption issues. Bison are nutritionally seasonal and their requirements are beginning to increase to support gestational demands. They will be increasing to 2.7% and will remain that high until late fall to support things such as lactation. Seasonality depends on the daylight hours, which affects the part of the brain controlling metabolism rates. This will then alter feed retention times and rumen capacity. Our current year-to-date feed costs are $78,500 of the projected $89,700. Our current semester spending on this ration is $23,713, with our per head per day cost at $3.17. This is an average due to the fluctuating feed costs that we've been feeding our animals. For more information, please refer to page 37 of the booklet. Hello, my name is Sarah McClellan. I'm from Sylvan Lake, Alberta, and I'm this year's finance coordinator. This year, our largest source of income was our cull cow sales. Our cull cows had brought us $103,307, our heifer calves had brought us $38,400, and our bull calves had brought us $62,800. This brings our total net income to $204,622. This year, we had come close to our budgeted calf income, but we had fallen $4,158 short on our bull calf sales, $11,327 short on our heifer calf sales. Fortunately, we were, able to make up through, we were able to make up for this loss with our cull cow sales. Due to our herd management, we had come in $93,307 over budget in our cull cow sales. This year, we were over budget on our hay costs due to changing our ration to a two to one hay to straw mix. Due to this ch change, we had come in under budget on our green feed costs. And we had allocated this money to supplement our excess hay costs. After all of our allocated income and expenses, we are showing a net loss, or sorry, a net profit of $21,525. This year, our grazing costs, this year, Sorry. <laughs> this year, our largest expenses were our, hate, our feed costs, our grazing costs, and our labor costs. 
and all of our allocated expenses had come to a total of $186,600. Next year's income was budgeted based on the dollar per pound that we had received when, he, when we sold our calves earlier this year. This also will include bolt sales. This brings their net income to $109,960. Next year's expenses were budgeted based on the, our year-to-date actuals, and this is why their hay costs, their hay budget has increased by $19,500. Their grazing costs were budgeted based on grazing for 183 days, and due to the decreased number of grazing animals, their budget has also decreased by $17,000. This brings their total net loss to $56,000. This year, for us to produce one calf of average weight of 370 pounds, it cost us $651. This breaks down to $1.76 per pound. To find these costs, we had allocated all expenses that went into raising a calf and had also considered the sale price we had received when we sold earlier this year. I am also this year's health coordinator. Last semester, we vaccinated our calves with Somnivision 8 to protect against clostridial diseases and dewormed with bimectin at weaning. This semester, we vaccinated and dewormed our cows and bulls when they were brought in for pregnancy detection. We used the same vaccination and dewormer as we did for our calves in the fall. However, due to extreme weather conditions, our injectable ivermectin froze and we had to switch to a pour-on version. While sorting cows for sale, one obtained an eye injury. This cow was still deemed fit for transport and the injury was managed by the buyer. We also chose a new herd veterinarian this semester, Dr. Kent Weir at Weir Veterinary Services in Lloydminster for the clinic's combined experience with and knowledge of bison. I am also this year's range and forage coordinator. The current land base includes eight cordon section quarter sections with perimeter bison fencing. We currently have access to LCP 27, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, and 34. LCP 28 is currently being rented. Our handling facility as well as a hay piece is located on the southeast of LCP 31. The forage production for the 2023 season was relatively low. Upon completing pasture assessments, we have concluded that all of our pastures are in a declining state of health with a significant amount of weedy disturbance due to the drought year and overgrazing. Forage production was one of the main factors that went into our herd management decision, along with water and feed availability. Please reference the information on the slides for the updated grazing cost for the 2023 season as it differs from the booklet. The grazing costs for the 2023 season were projected at $60,400 based on of 152 grazing days, and our actual realized cost was $48,819. The plan for the 2023 season was to rotationally grade the herd, graze the herd. The plan was not able to be followed later in the season due to the drought and limited forage production. We began feeding on the 16th of October. The projected grazing cost for the 2024 season is $43,371 based off of 183 grazing days at $1.50 per head per day for cows and heifer calves over the age of six months and $3 per head per day for bulls. We are proposing to rotationally graze the herd for the 2024 season. Our number of paddocks is limited by water access, as we currently have one water source in LCP 31 and another in LCP 32 that is also accessible from LCP 30, 31, and 33. We have divided our pastures into four main paddocks. We have the north half of LCP 31, LCP 32, LCP 33 and 34 will be grazed together as a half section, as well as LCP 29 and 30. The southeast of LCP 31, as well as in and around our handling facility, will form a fifth smaller paddock that will, able be, that will be able to be grazed at the end of the season to extend grazing days. LCP 31 has been designated our sacrifice pasture. The plan for winter was to rotate through our pastures while feeding to get a more even distribution of organic matter and manure. Unfortunately, due to the late and limited snowfall, this was not able to be followed, and we chose to keep our herd in one pasture for winter to limit the damage from overgrazing and keep them there for as long as possible in the spring when the stand is at its most, to let the rest of the pastures rest when the stand is at the, its most vulnerable when shifting from its dormant to active growth stage. 
The herd is currently in the north half of LCP31 and will remain there until the end of calving. For more information, please reference page 40 of the booklet. Hi, my name is Kira Kramer. I am from Barhead, Alberta, and I'm this year's facility coordinator. We are still in the process of completing upgrades to our facility. After being able to process the herd twice, we can see where we need to make changes. A new squeeze will increase animal and handler safety. A more curved alley leading up to our box alley will allow the bison to move more smoothly and calmly, reducing injury. We have continued talking to manufacturers and other producers to find what will fit best for our needs. We also have a water problem. Due to the late snowfall and lack of moisture, our dugouts are dry and there was no snow for the bison to consume. This forced our herd to rely on our waters. We have very low water pressure and our waters couldn't keep up with the herd. This is also a factor that helped with our herd management decision. In October, we got two new winter waters so we can have access to water during the winter. We will still look into solutions for our water pressure. Hello. I'm also this year's marketing coordinator. This year, we had chosen to sell our calves through Jack Auction Group based in Prince Albert, Saskatchewan. We had chosen Jack Auction as the auction was online and this eliminated the need for transportation prior to the sale. Our break-even price per pound for our calves was $3.44. In the sale, we had received $2.14 per pound for our bull calves and $1.30 per pound for our heifer calves. Earlier this year, completing, while completing our herd management, our, her, our team had chosen 71 animals to sell. This consisted of 51 bred cows and 20 open cows that we had sold through a private sale in February of this year. Our cows have weighed an average of 950 pounds and had sold for $1.25 per pound. For more information about our herd management, please refer to the booklet. I'm also this year's mixed farm coordinator. This year we decided to get signs to place in multiple locations on college land. On the sign there will be a QR code and the name of the field or the pasture. This will allow students and people visiting know where they are. You can scan the QR code and note to know what is planted there or what livestock is currently pastured there. I am also this year's public relations coordinator. Our Instagram this year had an average of 1,000 reached users per post. We gained 88 followers for a total of 251 followers. We received a total of 738 likes over all our posts, and our top post was our processing reel, which got us 971 views and 55 likes. Our Facebook this year had 4,430 reached users. We gained 35 followers for a total of 235 followers. Our post received 386 total likes, and our top post from January 16th had 3,500 reached users and 27 likes. You can check out our social medias above for more. Please refer to page 42 of the booklet for this semester's insights. Our recommendations for next year's team is to fix the cross fencing with bison fencing and upgrade the gates, update the tagging system at processing, keep 10 replacement heifers back for future breeding stock, sell the bottom half of the bulls at weaning and replace them in the spring, and pasture rejuvenation with a focus on weedy disturbance control. We would now like to take the time to thank the late Armin and Rita Mueller as well as their family. New Holland Agriculture, our advisor Erica Moore, Chris Lehman, Jaden Kramer, as well, along with all of the farm staff and faculty members. A special thank you to all of our buyers as well as all the producers and industry members who have supported and guided us this year. I would now like to open up the floor for questions. Yes. So the question was, we talked about our pastures being in a declining state of health, and we recommend pasture rejuvenation, and did we form any recommendations and guidelines for next year's team? So upon the fact that we believe they should start with the weedy disturbance control, we have not given them any other guidelines, because that will be up to next year's SMF team, as well as the range and forage committee. Does this answer your question? Yes. So 
so the question was that we're having issues with our water and if we have any plans to get more water for next year or if we're just going to pass it along to next year's team for them to look at. And I will be handing this question to Kira Kramer, our facilities coordinator. As it is not in our budget this year to drill a new well, we'll be looking into funding and grants for that for next year. Does this answer your question? Yes. Ron? So the question was, did we include the sale of our cows for the break even in our cost of production? And I will be handing this question over to Sarah, our finance and marketing coordinator. So the sale of our cows, when we had done our cost of production, we hadn't sold our cows yet. So we didn't have a price per pound or a price at all, for, like per head, to calculate it. So the price that we had used when cal calculating those costs, we had averaged out the price that we received for both, of our for both bull and heifer calves and I'd use that as the dollar per pound to calculate that equation. Does that answer your question? Right, so sorry. Um, the return per pound of calf at $3.44, um, that is just like, that represents the value of what, like of our calves. So when we had, so it just takes in the cost of production, like how much we had paid to produce one pound of calf, and then, like it just it represents how. So, <laughs> sorry, it represents. It represents the value of our calves. It doesn't. It's not our break-even price. Does that answer your question? Sorry. Thank you, Bison team. May I get extensive grazing and come up, please, now? Good afternoon and welcome to the Extensive Grazing Commercial Beef's final presentation. I'm Harley Carlson from Elm Creek, Manitoba, and I'm this year's General Manager. This year our team consists of eight members from across Manitoba, Saskatchewan, and Alberta. And our purpose is to uh, maintain a sustainable and, and economically viable extensive herd while exploring various cattle management practices. Our unit mission is to sustainably raise an extensive, low maintenance, strong maternal cow herd. We optimize grazing days by utilizing some, both summer and winter grazing management strategies that can be applied to various sized operations. Some recommendations we had from last year's team were to retag their placement heifers with engravable tags, continue being involved, or reevaluate re being involved in the Roundup sale. Buy a new Hereford bull, as well as continue working closely with research. We have since completed all of these. Some goals we had for the semester were to complete an RFI trial on our replacement heifers, buy a new bull, as well as cre create a summer grazing plan. For a SWOT analysis, under strengths, we have that our cows are genetically built to thrive in the environments and the management strategies that we use. Under weaknesses, we have our time management, as we have to work around four different class schedules. 
Under opportunities, we have the high calf prices, and under threats, we have the lack of land available around the college, as well as increasing feed prices. Hello, I am Eliza Anderson. I'm from Big Beaver, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's records coordinator. This year for inventory, we have 39 cows, six bred heifers, 28 replacement heifers, and two bulls. Our KPIs for this year, our growth of the calves is 40% of dam's weight at 205 days. Our open rate is 18% for both cows and heifers. Our length of calving season is 70 days. Our death loss is 0%. Our cows assisted at calving is 100% unassisted, and our grazing days is 316 days so far. For our open rate to combat this problem, we have made, created one breeding group to get greater bull cover on our cows and done blood samples on our cows to ensure their mineral consumption is adequate. Otherwise, our KPIs follow with industry standard well. Hi, I'm Emily Rumpf. I'm from Battleford, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's Roundup Coordinator. This year, as you may have heard at mid-years, we decided to consign a lot of three bred heifers to the fourth annual Roundup sale. We're very happy with the outcome of the sale as we received $3,700 per head on the lot, compared to last year's team selling in a Facebook auction, receiving $1,800 per head on the lot. This is an increase of $1,900 per head. We believe this increase is due to higher market prices, our extended efforts to market these heifers, along with the reputation of the Roundup sale. To break even on these heifers, we needed to receive a total of $2,200 per head. Receiving $3,700 per head left us with a profit of $1,400 per head. We'd like to give a huge thank you to Double Down Ranch for the purchase of these heifers and to everyone else who made this sale possible. For more information on the cost breakdown of these heifers, please refer to page 46 and 47 of your booklet. I'm also this year's research coordinator. This year, now that the swath grazing trial is over with the steers, our team is currently organizing polyculture swath grazing with cow-calf pairs on LC10. The swath grazing trial with steers showed promising performance on polyculture. We can assume that the data from a trial with cow-calf pairs will apply great to our unit along with other cow-calf producers. We also kept back 28 heifer calves this year, which were placed on a residual feed intake trial. Feed costs contribute to over 70% of overall operational costs. The potential economic return accrued after 15 to 25 years is estimated at $109 million annually for the Alberta feeder cattle industry. From this, we can assume that the impact on cow-calf producers will be similar. This is also a great piece of data for next year's team when it comes time to choose replacement and sale heifers. Our team did extensive research on whether to do this trial or not and found that the long-term benefits would outweigh the costs. I'm Ashley Garriock. I'm from Westlock, Alberta, and I'm this year's reproduction coordinator. This year we decided to keep 28 heifers to prioritize two main things. First, being reproduction. We plan to repro track score all our heifers come summer and all heifers with an inadequate score will be called. The rest will be bred and the opens will be called this fall. Our second reasoning is our RFI trial. The trial results will be used for next year's team as a selection criteria to pick the most feed efficient heifers. Hi, my name is Jasmine Peter. I'm from Rimby, Alberta, and I am this year's finance manager. Please note that there was a mistake in the calculation for the bull sale income for next year's budget and ranching for profit. This year, we used ranching for profit and stock flow sheets to determine the profitability and the size of the herd for next year. We did this to determine, or we did this to justify keeping 28 replacement heifers and selling 10 bred cows and to show how it will positively impact the income for next year. We predict that there will be two deaths in the herd, one cow and one heifer from the 2023 calf crop, seven cows will be sold as calls, two two-year-old heifers will be sold as calls, along with 19 replacement heifers sold as breads or opens. From the 2024 calf crop, we predict that there will be two heifer calves sold at weaning, along with 23 steer calves and after breeding the sale of one call bull. This comes to a predicted income of $138,000 or $138,200. Please refer to page 49 in the booklet for more information.
Hi, I'm also this year's marketing coordinator. As we all know, we've been suffering through another drought. Due to this, our team created an ABC list within our herd, A being the best and C being the cows we would sell if something were to happen. We did just this when we noticed our cows losing condition out on bale grazing, approaching the summer grazing months. We evaluated the herd and sold the sea cows. The coal market this winter has been at an all-time high, making it the most economically viable time to sell these cows. The money from these sales will be later reinvested into the herd to expand numbers in the future. To do this, we created a reinvestment plan which will ensure the succession of this herd. Shown behind me on the graph on the left is the comparison of calf prices from November 2022 and November 2023 when we sold our steer calves. We received an average price of 370 per pound compared to November 2022, the average price of 250 per pound. This is a market increase of $1.20 per pound. For cull sales this year, we sold 10 bred cows, 13 open cows, and two open heifers for a total of just under $54,000 after deductions. We are currently in the process of buying Lily Brooks 262K. When looking for a bull, we followed three main criteria. Our first being light birth weight. We looked in the range of 80 to 88 pounds due to calving on pasture, as well as our second was RFI. We looked at no bulls with a score higher than 0.13 due to the lower the score, the more feed efficient the bull is. And our third we looked at was overall structure of the bull. This year, we decided to have one breeding group instead of two for drought management, as well as better bull cover, as well as having one group has better land disturbance. Hello. Hello, my name is Samantha Simonson. I'm from Outlook, Saskatchewan, and I'm this year's range and forage coordinator. As we all know, we have been suffering in a drought for the last few years. To help with this, my team has come up with a drought management plan. First, we are currently in the process of deciding whether or not to dry lot our 28 heifers until breeding. We feel as though the extra costs of this um, are worth the extra days we get on grazing. And this also opens up the opportunity for another team to graze with us if needed. We also sold all of our sea cows, as Emily previously mentioned, and I've created a grazing plan with several risk management pieces in place. This year, we'll start grazing on LC24. This will be our sacrifice pasture and be the pasture that all of our cows calve out on. We plan to move here on April 15th after we are completed bale grazing and plan to shred bales on this pasture until the grass comes up. We want to focus on shredding bales on the hilltops and weedy areas in hopes of regenerating this pasture. On June 10th, we'll move to LC22. As you can see in the diagram on the right, I've split this pasture into 12 paddocks, and each paddock will be grazed for approximately four days. On July 20th, we will move our cows to LC23. As you can see in the diagram on the left, I've also split this pa pasture up into 13 paddocks, and each paddock will also be grazed for approximately four days or as long as the grass allows. Over all three of our pastures, we have 25 paddocks. This allows for rapid regeneration of the land and good, good gain on our animals as we graze aggressively for four days and then allow the land 60 days of rest. For risk management pieces, we can shred bales on LC24 for as long as needed if the grass does not come out up as soon as we anticipate. We can also move back to LC22 on, July, on August 14th if the grass runs out on LC23 faster than we hope, as it will have been 60 days since we first grazed that pasture. We plan to move to LC22 on September 1st and regraze the first eight paddocks before we move to aftermath grazing. As you can see, our biggest costs, grazing costs this year were, were on pasture. We spent $16,000 on pasture, $2,100 on aftermath grazing, and $1,700 on corn grazing. For next year's budget, we have allowed for $27,500 on pasture grazing and $17,500 on annual crop grazing, which includes corn grazing, aftermath grazing, and any swath grazing we might do. 
The reason this budget is so much higher than last year is due to the rising grazing costs. For more information, please refer to page 47 of your booklet. I am also this year's facilities coordinator, and this year I have taken on the project of finding a winter water system for LC 23 and 24. After looking at many different options, the Stock Boss Water Bowl was the one that suited what we need best due to our well depth and our lack of electricity. Hi, I am also this year's health and treatments coordinator. This year our team chose not to scour guard our herd due to our cows calving on pasture, little foot traffic, low threat of biosecurity, and never having a problem with scours before. As a team, we also reached out to other producers with similar management styles to ours and made the final decision not to scour guard our herd with regards that those producers also did not. My name is Aspen McTaggart. I'm from Pinoca, Alberta, and I'm this year's nutrition coordinator. The heifer calves we have on an RFI trial are eating a ration comprised of hay, corn silage, barley grain, DDGs, and mineral for a total of 24 pounds per head per day. We decided to add the wheat DDGs because they are a cheaper source of protein. This ration costs $3 per head per day, and we saw an average daily gain of 2.67 pounds. To transition our weaned heifer calves, we started them on a step-up ration that is outlined in page 48 of the booklet. Our team also had three bred heifers that we sold in the Roundup sale. Their ration consisted of straw, barley silage, corn silage, and mineral for a total of 24 pounds per head per day. This ration costs 82 cents per head per day, and we saw an average daily gain of 2.48. The reason our RFI ration was so much more expensive than this one was to accommodate for higher forage in the form of hay, as well as to increase the energy profile so that our calves could reach their target breeding weight. We are continuing the bale grazing from last semester and have found the average number of days the cows spent in each paddock to be five days. Our goal was to have three-day paddocks, but due to downsizing our herd and grazing the same number of bales, our number of days has increased. We were not reaching our goal of 80% utilization, even with the molasses on our pea straw bales, although it did help the cows utilize more of the feed. We tried to troubleshoot this issue by spreading grain on top of the leftover pea straw before the cows moved into the next paddock. Our team ultimately made a decision not to put pea straw on the second half of our bale grazing field. The cows were still not cleaning up great, even with the grain, and it wasn't worth the extra labor cost to clean up to prepare the field for seeding. The fact that the, our cows were going through the feed slower than expected meant that we had extra hay bales already placed that would not get used if we continued to mix the hay and pea straw. Again, this is an added labor cost to remove those pre-placed bales. My name is Bailey Dimitri. I'm from Industry, Alberta, and I was this year's mixed farm coordinator. Last year's team purchased 20 acres of fall rye in hopes it would get planted that summer. This unfortunately did not happen. Our team took the liberty of purchasing 80 more, 87 more acres of fall rye seed, putting us up to 107 acres total. This will get planted on LC 1516 in hopes that it will help with soil health as fall rye has a strong root system. This should also give us approximately another month of grazing come fall. Body condition scoring was part of our ABC herd. <coughs> we noticed our cows lost body condition score. We believe that this was due to them being on stockpiled forage on LC6. While our animals did have access to our bale grazing, they did not want to leave LC6 as this was their only source of shelter. This year, we used an electric fencing system to feed our cows. We initially drilled a hole placed a rebar post, and then used a hammer or manual post pounder to get the post in even farther. We utilized using two wires during the colder months as our cows did break out once, and the utilization of two wires, could one could act as a ground and the other as our hot wire. During our, the spring thaw, we noticed that our rebar posts were getting pushed out of the ground. We switched back to using pigtail posts and hoped that this would com combat that problem. Around Christmas, we realized loose mineral consumption of our cows dropped, and we suspected copper and cobalt deficiency returning from last year. We did blood testing on the cows, and as you can see on the screen, the results came back with low zinc, sorry, low iron, high zinc, and molybdenum. Molybdenum is known to tie up copper. The low iron results we received were due to hemolysis in our test samples. 
After this scare, we deducted that mineral consumption had dropped because our cows had started grazing the pea straw bales with added molasses. 26% of the molasses composed of minerals, and it turned out that 81% of their daily needs were coming from that molasses. I continued to track intake and lose mineral intake to ensure that the molybdenum would not cause an issue. We made sure the mineral we were feeding was chelated, and I found that consumption increased as we exited the cold spell, as well as once we stopped grazing the molasses bales, loose mineral consumption jumped back up to where it was before grazing the molasses bales. For our income this year, we had $66,000 in steer sales and $57,000 in call cow sales. 25,000 of this was from the 10 bred cows we sold back in January. For our budget, compared to income, we are over budget in our call cow sales and our steer sales due to the higher cattle prices and because we had sold more cows than what last year's team predicted due to the upcoming drought. As you can see, our bred heifer sales are under budget, but this does not include the three bred heifers that we sold at the Roundup sale. This will be accounted for in our inventory adjustment. We are also under budget with our heifer calf sales because we only sold four out of the 32 heifers at weaning. For our higher expenses, we have $30,700 in feed expense, $8,600 in equipment rental, and $3,400 in sale deductions and vet and medical. For our higher expenses compared to budget, we are over budget in corral cleaning, labor, farm supplies, vet and medical, sale deductions, and equipment rental. For farm supplies and vet and medical, we are over budget just due to the rising costs in industry. For corral cleaning, we are over budget because more corrals had been cleaned out in the spring and over the summer. For labor, we are over budget because we had spent more time monitoring and processing our herd to watch their body condition score. For equipment rental, we are over budget due to the higher cost of fuel and because we had used the tractor more often than what last year's team predicted due to the RFI trial. And for sale deductions, we are over budget because the cost of commission for bred cows is significantly higher than for open cows. For our lower expenses this year, there was nothing that raised any concerns for the team this year. And for our lower expenses compared to budget, we are over budget in our semen testing, but this was due to a concern with the breeding bulls before breeding season. And to be on the safe side, we tested all three bulls. This comes to a net income of uh, $54,000. For our budget comparison under income, we added an open heifer category of $8,500. This is due to keeping more replacement heifers back for next year's team. We also increased the bred heifer budget to $40,000. We decreased the heifer budget to $3,200 because we are advising that next year's team keeps as many heifers as they can back as replacements. And please note that the bull sale budget should be $3,500, not $5,000. For our budget comparison under expenses, we added a grazing slash feed cost, which is our annual crop grazing. This includes corn, swath grazing, and fall rye that next year's team will do. We, this means that our feed cost ha will decrease to $21,000. Our grazing cost has increased to $27,500 due to the rising cost per head per day. We also increased our bull purchase budget so that next year's team does not have to worry as much about the budget while purchasing a bull. We got rid of our bull rental budget because we do not believe that next year's team will have to rent a bull. And for our equipment rental, we increased the budget to $9,000 because we are advising that next year's team also does the RFI trial and will need the tractor more often. This comes to a, income or a net income of $19,000. For our cost of production, we compared the calves we produced, which are the 28 replacement heifers, to the calves we sold. We look at the cost to produce a pound of calf, the return per pound of calf, the profit or loss per pound of calf, the profit or loss for the cow, and the profit or loss for the entire herd. As you can see, all the numbers on the screen are positive, meaning our herd had a uh, profit this year. And finally, for our inventory adjustment, we took our actual income and added the three bred heifers that we sold at the Roundup sale to get our accrual income. Uh, we added, or we minused our expenses to get our net income of $64,800. We then compared the inventory value from the herd this year compared to last year and found that there was a $31,000 increase, which we then added to our net income to get a net inventory adjustment of $96,000. For more information on the budget 
the cost of production, and the inventory adjustment, please refer to page 49, page 50, and page 51 in the booklet. I am also this year's public, public relations coordinator. On our Facebook page, we've had a total page reach of 16,600, new followers of 54, as well as page visits of 2,400. And on our Instagram page, we've had total page reach of 1,400, new followers of 68, as well as page visits of 724. And for both our Instagram and Facebook, these numbers are from September 1st, 2023 until March 31st, 2024. And some recommendations we have for next year's team is to continue being involved in the Roundup sale, avoid grazing stockpiled forages in cold temperatures, look into adding a third breed into the herd, as well as RFI test the replacement heifers. And thank you to New Holland Agriculture, Tracy Quinton, Marisa Schubel, Chris Lehman, Kyle Hafner, the rest of the farm team, as well as the Ag Faculty and Research Department. We would now like to open the floor to any questions. So the question that is asked is why it's recommended that, we, that they look into adding a third breed. I will pass this to Ashley, our reproduction. Um, the main reason for it is for hybrid vigor. We're starting to lose the hybrid vigor in our herd. And part of that being like hybrid vigor can also help with your feed efficiency in your herd. So as a grazing team, and we put all this work into trying to get the most feed efficient animals, if we're starting to lose that hybrid vigor and our, like our feed intake um, isn't as good anymore, then it's it's not, it kind of goes against what our team stands for. So having that hybrid vigor is really important to us. Does this answer your question? Yeah. Why was the 20 acres of fall rye not planted last year? So the question that was asked is, why is the 20 acres of fall rye not planted next, last year? I will pass this to Bailey, our mixed farm coordinator. Uh, with the lack of rainfall we received last year, the farm team ultimately decided that it, we shouldn't plant it, even though we did get rainfall in August and September. It was ultimately their decision whether it got into the ground or not. Does this answer your question? Yeah. So the question that was asked is, on our slide it says that the stock boss water does not uh, require electricity, and so how do we plan on getting the water from the bottom of the well to the bowl? I'll pass this to Ashley, our facilities. The hopes is to get a solar powered water pump, so we don't need electricity, we can just use the sun and then that kind of, it's just a more, uh, like it's better, not as ex expensive is to, yeah, do solar power. Does this answer your question? Thank you to the extensive grazing unit. I would now like to call the dairy unit to the stage. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the 2023-2024 Dairy Unit Final Presentation. My name is Rebecca DeYoung from Jarvis, Ontario, and I am this year's Dairy Unit General Manager. Behind me on the screen is my wonderful team of nine students, ranging from northern Alberta to southern Ontario. Our unit's mission statement is as follows. We strive to produce quality milk and raise healthy animals, focusing on production and efficiency while gaining skills and knowledge to be used in the dairy industry. 
Some goals we have accomplished thus far in the year include obtaining genetic diversity in the herd, creating a corn silage demo recommendation plan, as well as a feed inventory plan. Some goals that will remain ongoing include our transition cow health, decreased services per conception, and increased pregnancy rates. Some recommendations we have left for future teams include continuing that genetic, genetic diversity in the herd, creating a pasture plan for our dry cows, which you will hear about later, the Western Canadian Dairy News participation, as well as heifer edema management. Our team has created a SWOT analysis this year, strengths being our diverse knowledge, somatic cell count improvements, as well as genetic improvements, and overall milk quality. Some weaknesses for our team include student presence and availability, specifically on the weekends and holidays, feed consistently, consistency, currently underfilling quota, and future replacements. Opportunities for the dairy unit include sponsorships, the Western Canadian Dairy Seminar, embryos and semen selection, as well as community outreach initiatives. Threats to the dairy unit include climate fluctuations, equipment depreciation, political influences and changes, as well as inflation of services and goods. Hello everyone, my name is Jamie Beisterveld, I am from Warman, Saskatchewan, and I am this year's Herd Health Coordinator. Behind me, you can see a pie chart of some of the more prevalent diseases we have had in our lactating cows throughout the past year. One of our biggest issues being ketosis. This is due to our cows not getting enough energy from their feed once they calve. This averages to be about 8% of our herd. Industry standard says an achievable rate is 2% and an alarming rate is greater than 8%. This is an ongoing issue that needs to be monitored. Another issue we commonly see is retained placentas. This can be due to many factors such as dystocia, calving twins, and metabolic disorders. As you saw on the previous slide, we have had one treated displaced abomasum. We believe this is due to the cow calving twins and not being monitored closely enough afterwards. She, uh, she dropped in milk production at 14 days in milk and did not have a collar on to monitor rumination and activity. Once we discovered this DA, we decided to call our vet to come and do a surgery on her. The surgery went well and she is now producing. We've also had one other cow we suspected to have a DA. We also suspected it could have been hardware disease. Neither of these were confirmed as she was a cull cow and was sent direct to slaughter. Behind me now is another pie chart of some of the more reoccurring diseases we have had in our heifers through the past year. Our biggest issue being pneumonia. This is due to temperature changes and stressful events such as switching pens. Another issue we commonly see is diarrhea. This is due to our facility being a learning facility and having people coming in and out of our calf rooms for learning projects or labs. This causes diseases such as scours. This affects their immune systems. We have boot dips at the entrances of all of our doors to help reduce this. Hello, I am Colton McAvoy and I am from Star City, Saskatchewan. I'm this year's Transition Cow Coordinator since April 1st, 2023, the dairy unit has had 147 cows and heifers calve, with 65% transitioning without complication. On the screen behind me is the health graph of Lakeland Cow 372. Uh, we get the information on the graph from the Sense Hub callers, and this graph begins on February 27th. The first dip you see on the screen is when the animal calved, and it, it's a dip in her daily rumination and activity. It then begins to rise after calving, and she returns to normal levels. The second dip you can see, or drop you can see, is in daily rumination and, and activity on March 21st. We received a health alert to our phone through SenseHub app, and we tested the cow's ketones for ketosis to find she was positive. Over the next following days, we began to, te or we began to treat her, and the, as you can see on the graph, her daily activity and rumination began to return to normal levels, indicating she's recovering. We confirmed this on day three with a ketone test to find that she was fully recovered. The benefit of having sense hub collars is it can provide a window or can narrow down the window for when our animals are going to calve and can also provide insight into an animal's health throughout her lactations to see if she's having issues. This semester we have struggled with utter edema in our heifers. We were advised by our nutritionist to begin bringing our heifers into the barn later than the two weeks prior to calving, which we normally do. This gave us no positive results, and we are currently considering the possibility of salinity in our hay that we feed to the heifers and have bought new hay that will be feed tested 
so we can closely monitor what our animals are eating to see if there's a correlation. My name is Cassidy Portis. I'm from Winchester, Ontario, and I am the 2023-2024 Dairy Unit Finance Coordinator. I take into account all financial matters concerning the dairy unit through our fiscal year, yet again being from March from April 1st of 2023 to March 31st of 2024. The chart behind me shows a depiction of our income through our fiscal year, yet again being from April 1st of 2023 to March 31st of 2024. As is visible on the chart, we can see that milk sales makes up the bulk of our income for this fiscal year at 91%. This is followed by cow and cull cow sales, as well as the dairy direct payment program, both making up 3%, heifer and cull heifer sales at 2%, calf sales making up 1%, and other sources of income, such as rebates and discounts, making up less than 1% of our income. On the bar graph behind me, we can see the budgeted amount for our fiscal year displayed in blue, our expended amount or our actuals in black, and the budgeted amount for the 2024-2025 dairy unit in yellow. As is visible based on the bar graph, we can see that our income projections for next year's team are predicted to be slightly lower. This is due to issues in fertility for our herd, projected feed quality for next year's team, and issues such as drought heavily impacting these numbers. As for milk sales for this fiscal year, we have nearly perfectly met the budgeted amount that the 2022-2023 dairy unit has left, left for us at $1,405,620 worth of gross milk sales. We have not yet received the milk pay statement for the month of March, and discounting this, we will nearly perfectly meet our goal, considering that the deviation between the actual amount and the current budgeted amount is $122,181. As for expenses through this year, feed was our largest expense, and it has been discounted from this chart for reviewing convenience. For further information on feed expenditures, I ask that you please refer to pages 58 to 60 in the booklet. As mentioned previously, feed was our largest expense, but discounting feed, our largest expenses coming in for this fiscal year are as follows. For general labor, manure handling, and bedding. As mentioned previously, feed is our largest expense for the year, making up 54% of all expenditures that the DLC exhausts through our fiscal year. This year, we are very fortunate to be $113,558 under budget on feed. As is visible based on the bar graph, for next year's team, we have allocated an extra 10% to the feed budget in order to account for rising feed costs and the potential for drought. Notable changes that we have made to the expense budget for next year's team are in our manure handling section. We, this year, we were over budget by 74% for manure handling due to our custom contractor raising his prices. In this case, I would also like to note that labor and utilities are obtained based on the dairy cost study and industry standards and remain constant. As for other changes made to the budget, we have increased our vet and medical expenses by 2.5% to account for rising prices of fuels under the consideration that mileage for our vet is high and he is based in Leduc. We have also allotted $2,500 to the range and forage budget. This is in order for next year's team to consider the pasture project for grazing our dry cows in front of the DLC. In addition to this, we have deducted 50% from the livestock purchasing budget. This, in, this is in order to discount for the, having the possibility of feeding any extra animals through a potential drought. As the finance coordinator for this year, it was my responsibility to come up with a cost of production for a certain age animal for a specific output. In this year's case, I have put together the cost of production to produce a pregnant heifer in the DLC. I consider every cost that goes into the growth and care of the heifer from birth until our average, average age of conception. This year, we have discovered that the cost of production for a pregnant heifer in the DLC is $2,269.70. My name is Jack Link. I'm from Winchester, Ontario, and I'm the feed coordinator for the dairy unit. Firstly, I'd like to touch on the cost per head per day for our current dairy animals. Uh, our, currently, our lactating animals are at $12.67 a day. Our dry cows are at $2.73 a day. Our close-up cows are at $4.83 a day. Our far-off heifers are at $2.49 a day. And our current heifer average is at $2.89 a day. For more information on rations, please refer to page 61 and 62 in the booklet. As I'm sure all of you have heard by now, that there is a possible drought that is looming all over all of us. 
What we had done is we had planned to reduce the forages within our diet to help conserve forages in case our fields do not yield well next year. So what we had done is we had reduced the forages within our heifer diets to save 6,200 kilos of barley or er, corn silage a month and 5,425 kilos of barley silage a month to help conserve more forages for our current lactating animals. Lastly, I'd like to touch on the 300 gram increase in palm fat within our diet. We had noticed that we had an average of a 0.23% increase within our butter fat, which outweighs our cost after our profits. Um, it took, although we did see a great success within our uh, production, it did take a while to start seeing success within our reproduction. In March, we had many more show pregnant than previous months. Although we did have some issues with the palm fat, w including within our, with our feeding system that we have here at the DLC, such as augers getting gummed up and the lily, door, uh, lily vector door getting gummed up. These were minor fixes, but headaches at times, but overall, the palm fat was a positive experience. I'm Kasia Bowman, I'm from Linwood, Ontario, and this year's Utter Health and Production Coordinator. This year I've looked into utter health issues and specific courses of action to minimize transmission of contagious mastitis pathogens, as well as monitoring our herd SCC and ways to lower our bulk tank SCC. This graph depicts the college's SCC for the past two years, and as you can see, this pathogen. Culturing on farm helps us do our part in reducing antimicrobial resistance. Comparing the last two years of milk production, you can see this past year has been notice noticeably de declining due to the uh, increase in butter fat production. The decrease in the summer months was due to heat stress. Compar As a team, we've been working hard at improving our butter fat production and have been successful at doing so through the use of better quality feeds as well as the uh, increase in, but in palm fat to our ration. For more information on utter health and production, see page 60 and 61 in the booklet. I am Stephanie Meserly from Tyndall, Manitoba, and I am this year's calf management coordinator. This year, we have had a total of 147 calves, including 77 bull calves, 73 heifer calves, and seven sets of twins, five stillborns, and four heifer calves dying later on in life. On February 19, Vermilion Have No Fear 684 died suddenly. She had a decrease in milk intake as well as drinking speed and acting lethargic with increased breathing and coughing in the days leading to her death. She was taken to the vet for a post-mortem and it was determined that she had passed away from tetralogy of flow, which is a genetic disorder causing the hole within the heart, ultimately causing the oxygenated and non-oxygenated blood to flow into each other. This commonly presents as pneumonia, excluding the fever in calves. As calf management coordinator, a project I have been working on is weighing the pre-weaning calves once they have entered the calf rooms to track their average daily gain. According to industry, pre-weaning calves should be gaining 1.5 pounds a day or more. As you can see on the graph behind me, we are meeting these requirements. I then decided to compare our average daily gain to last year's average daily gain. And as you can see on the graph behind me in blue, our calves are gaining more weight towards weaning this year. This is due to the fact that we have changed the feeding program on our automatic calf feeder from 58 days on milk to 72 days on milk in April of 2023, ultimately giving them two more weeks on milk and showing a drastic increase. I am also this year's genetic selection coordinator as well as a member of the reproduction team. An ongoing goal for the DLC herd is genetic diversity. This year, we found that options through our current semen company have been becoming exhausted in terms of the high possibilities of line breeding or inbreeding occurring. We have also noticed declining pregnancy and conception rates. Due to this, I have reached out to Blondin Sires to test an allotted 20 straws of Mystique Avenger for his rump angle, Blondin Destination for his high daughter fertility, as well as Blondin Energy for his excellent quality of feet and legs. 
We are also looking into the purchase of embryos for the 2024-2025 dairy unit to implant. We are actively in search of these embryos in order to maximize our genetic gain as well as our genetic diversity. Hi, my name is Nicole Elliker and I'm from St. Mary's, Ontario, and I'm on this year's reproduction team. On the graph behind me, you can see our conception rate percentage. As you can see, in September we had a decrease and this was due to summer heat stress. Upon our arrival in September, the breeding team made alterations to our breeding program, which resulted in an increase in October. In December, we had another decrease, and this was due to the lack of energy in our feed, as well as our barley silage not being completely processed. We also had our robot pe pellet feeder malfunction during the month of October, which resulted in cows not meeting their daily intake. I'm also on this year's reproduction team, and at the DLC, we have various forms of treatment for metritis, mainly using Depacillin and Medicam for cows that still present with a retained placenta following one week post-calving. Cows are all, always fresh checked at herd health, and if they are found dirty, they are then put on a list for a shot of estermate to bring them to heat, followed by a metricare, they are then rechecked at the following herd health. Alternative treatments include Oxyvet, Savaxel, and Anafin. I'm also this year's mixed farm SOPs and records coordinator. This year, the dairy team came up with a five-year corn demo recommendation plan, which was presented in our mid-year presentation. In further planning, Pi Pioneer 6909 will be planted on LC18, which is 80 acres, and the two demo varieties, Pride 1017 and Pioneer 7202, will be planted on LC19, which is 90 acres. This is a total of 170 acres of corn that will be planted. Along with spring planting preparations, the mixed farm team has decided where the dairy's liquid manure will be spread this spring. Plan A is to spread on the grasslands, which is LCP 22, 23, and 24, and Plan B is to spread on the two corn fields, which is LC 18 and 19. Please refer to page 56 of the booklet for a map of the college lands. For SOPs and records this year, the dairy team completed our self-declaration for proaction in February. With the new code of practice coming into effect April 1st, the DLC is keeping in mind many of the updated codes, including calf housing, lactating and dry cow housing, calving areas, and stocking density. Hi, I am Gelsey Bicker. I'm from Bard, Alberta, and I am this year's public relations coordinator. These are the top countries where the total audience is reached for Instagram and Facebook this year. The total audience reach for Instagram had an 11.4% increase rate and a 19.2% increase rate for Facebook. The top countries reached by social media was North America, Switzerland, New Zealand, and Europe. As a team, we pick a few cows that have been performing well in the barn, and for every month, we pick one cow who we feel deserves to be posted for Cow of the Month. In January, we nominated Greenbelt Merrick I because of how well she's been doing throughout her sixth lactation, producing 80 liters in her peak. In February, we nominated 346 Vermilion Takeoff Shirky. She is in her third lactation, producing 60 liters. She is, loves scratches and loves getting her picture taken. And in March, we nominated 526 Vermilion Zesperella Dumbo. She is a great cow to work with. She is very friendly and loves to run through foot baths. As a team, we had a great opportunity to attend the Western Canadian Dairy Seminar, where we were able to learn more about research within the dairy industry and where we were able to make connections with people involved within this industry. The Dairy Learning Center has won the Alberta Milk Award 12 times in the last 22 years, and we recently won the Alberta Milk Award for 2024, which puts the Dairy Learning Center in the top 74 producers of Alberta. The Dairy Learning Center is very thankful for all the awards they have won throughout the years and feel a sense of accomplishment in producing quality milk. I am also this year's Range and Forage Coordinator for the Dairy Unit. This year we had no grazing costs because we were able to keep our dry cows in our dry cow facility and our pregnant half. The land. The dairy unit would like to extend a sincere thank you to all those who have helped us in the year. We will now open the floor to any questions.
So thank you, first of all. And the question was regarding our feed costs and how we saved money with the upcoming drought. Um, so I'll hand it over to Cassidy Porteous, our finance coordinator for this one. So we were able to save money compared to the budget because last year's team had budgeted for us a little bit extra money in terms of also the possibility of drought happening this year. So like I mentioned previously, they've allocated extra money into that budget, so the current budget for this fiscal year, in order to account for the possibility of us having to purchase extra hay as well as the potential for rising feed costs in the same sense that I've allocated an extra 10% for next year's team in order to combat the potential for having to buy in more hay and for rising feed costs. Does this answer your question? Yeah. So the question was, do we expect uh, increased biosecurity in the next few years? That was your question. Um, so for this, I will hand it over to our records and SOPs coordinator, Nicole Elker. Uh, yes, we do, especially with the um, virus bird flu that has been coming up from the states. So we're doing that, like we have um, boot covers for all our guests, as well as boot dips in front of the calf, calf houses that um, are changed twice a week. So that's how we are protecting our barn. Does that answer your question? So our, the question was regarding our high pneumonia rates in our, in our heifers and calves and what is our treatment protocol for that. So I'll hand it over to Stephanie Meserly, our calf management coordinator for this one. Um, so we go in with ResFlor first and then if they are not seeing a change, we'll go in again within three days, give them another shot of ResFlor. And then we will wait a little bit and if we still see them coughing and not doing too well, we will give them another shot of new floor, sorry, after that. Does that answer your question? Oh, sorry. Um, we are using once SQ for our prevention. Right. Does that answer your question? The once PMSQ is our vaccination for our calves, as well as Covexin and nasal gen. <laughs> Does that answer your question? <laughs> Thank you to the dairy unit, and thank you to the following people for their help throughout this year. Farm staff, Chris Lehman, Amber Sayers, Sharon Reeder, Kyle Hafner, Louis Reels, Madison Smith, Bailey Hills, as well as Jaden Kramer and Justin Kane. Thank you to the marketing department of Lakeland College who have provided excellent assistance and to all the marketing units. Thank you to the staff and information technology department, including Liam Lawrence, who ensures that the audiovisual equipment and the online broadcast facilitates well. Thank you to Denise Martin and, Tr and Trisha Mekor for their help in so very many ways. The Dean of Administration, Tracy Quinton, as well as Associate Dean Darla Stepanik and Chair Brianne Bellwood. I would like to call on Tracy Quinton, Interim Dean of Agricultural Sciences, for a few remarks. Thank you. I'd, I'd like to thank the first year um, leaders for the SMF group for hosting uh, the event today as well. And take an opportunity to thank the, the faculty and staff as well. Uh, I really appreciate the, the faculty that put in the extra hours 
with these, these students to make sure that they're getting the best opportunities that they can here at Lakeland College. So let's give them a round of applause and appreciate their work. So ex excellent job today. Congratulations on a, on a well done uh, final presentation. I know it's the last school day. Uh, you have final exams to, to prep for next, next week, but uh, I'm sure you'll take some time this afternoon or this evening and, and uh, have some celebrations. I know a few of you for sure will, so uh, make, make sure you do that uh, wisely and appropriately and take the time to study as well this weekend. Um, I'd also like to thank all the industry people that are in attendance. Without uh, the industry support, the Student Managed Farm wouldn't exist. It's really one of the key things that, that we appreciate and value and, and want to continue to grow. I think that's, that's the key thing for our SMF is that tie-in to, to industry. So we really do appreciate you coming and asking questions. The students might not, but uh, faculty and, 